Uh, so anybody who's recording this song, you yes. might as well stop. The days of recording songs on cassettes <laughs> should have been over a long time ago. Yes, he is, he is, don't you know? Uh, I can now, after years of, of an absence, Terry, I have the ability to talk over songs again. I know. Are you excited about that? So excited. Okay, and believe me, not one song will go excused. That I know. Okay. All too well. That's right. <laughs> now, how are you? you? Doing well? I'm doing very good, thanks. Okay. And you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Good. You had a nice break? You had a nice time off? You had some good fun? What? Good fun, lots of... It a lot was, of breastfeeding free time? Lots of breastfeeding free time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's, it was a busy one, so... Mm-hmm. Which one? My, my, my... My left one. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what I was wondering. Which one? No, just the whole break itself was busy. And, busy. Yeah. A lot of stuff. Yeah. Why was it so busy? Why was it so busy? Well... You stayed home, right? Yeah, but... It's never it just, busy. You no, stay home. No, it was busy. It just seemed like it was busy with all the kids at home, mm-hmm. you know? Well, so, you have a tribe now, Terry. I know that. This and is your life. It is, and it's a busy life. So it's life. not out of the ordinary as far as being busy. This is just your life. Yeah. Yeah. So that it, 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 one can make the argument that it's not busy. One could, however. Is, busy would mean it's out of the ordinary. Huh? Right. Who cares? Anyhow. <laughs> when are you breath. having a baby, by the way? Uh, any second now, Terry. <laughs> That's the truth. I can get a call any second now saying really? it's on the move and I'll and I'll be on the move. It's in the birth canal. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Is that what happens? Yes. Ugh, Head no. down, ready All to go. Right. Well, the head's already down. No, oh, mm. knocking on the knocking on the door to the outside. Has been down for about eight weeks now, Terry. <laughs> oh, you talking about the baby? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, yes. uh, Kilbreath not with us for the next two days. He's on day number, I believe, eleven and a half of his fourteen-day cruise. Yeah. Jeez. You know he's loving life right now. Jeez. Boy, can I get off the boat or what? Going back to the cabin, <laughs> walking in, looking at Amy, going, "Oh, you again? <laughs> <laughs> Terrific." The same people at dinner. Uh-huh. Oh, jeez. 14-day cruise. That's a long cruise. Now, no one's knocking the whole concept of the cruise, but uh, after seven days, it becomes a prison sentence. Yes. Okay. Agree with you totally. The first seven days are fine. Sure. 10-day cruise, maybe. Mm, 14-day cruise, throw me overboard, please. <laughs> and no life preserver. Right. <laughs> with or without a life preserver, I don't care. Get me the hell off this ship. Yep. Well, that's where he is right now, day uh, 11 or 12. Maybe we'll try to make contact with the captain <laughs> Yeah. at some point today. Okay. But, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we've been on a Christmas break for two weeks, and we're back now, and uh, life is better for it, don't you know? Mm-hmm. Sure. Although, it could be back off the air in the next five minutes if the baby, if the tea baby is born. Too. Mm-hmm. A lot of contractions, huh? That's right. Uh, huh? A lot of contractions. Sure. Happen? Okay. Talking about me? Her. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Braxton Hick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Swagger, did you miss us? Yes, I did. All right. Thanks for the call. <laughs> wow, that's Says it. That's a lot about his family. Huh? What else is going on in the world, Terry? John, John, did you miss us? I missed you absolutely, and I guarantee it. Oh, okay, thank you. Now, uh, that gets that out of the way early. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Does anyone feel like they're not going to be able to follow through with their day because they didn't hear the John, John guarantee, or... Or are we all okay? I think we're okay. Really? I'm yeah. Because if there's one person out there, Terry, saying, hey, how does T-Man cut John John off in the middle of his guarantee? We'll find that one person, and then maybe we'll listen to him again, but okay. I doubt you will. You're, you're doubting <laughs> that there's one person out there saying that they feel at a loss without John John's completing his thought of his guarantee. Yes. I, I think you may be right there. Okay. Then. All right. But hmm. if there is one person, Terry, then I would feel horrible. Okay. All right. So far, no one's giving any indication that that's the case. Mm-hmm. Now, what do you have over there, Terry? News about Britney Spears and Kevin Federline. But if there is one person, I mean, uh, I will open the phone lines just to make sure I haven't done anything wrong here, Terry. Okay. And, of course, as always, as usual, that number is toll-free, 1-866-663-T-MAN, Terry. Yes. Not, not T-MAN, Terry, but <laughs> T-MAN. <laughs> Right. I'm just telling you, Terry, in case you forgot after a busy two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for refreshing my memory. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, what were you saying? I was going to talk to you about Britney Spears and Kevin Fender Well, uh, now that I opened the phone lines, Terry, some phones are ringing. Really? And I'm wondering, of course, uh, as to whether I might have uh, done something horrible in not letting uh, John John complete the thought of his guarantee. Well, I guess you'll just have to answer the phone to find out. Oh, you're on the air. Is that how it works, Terry? Oh, no. You're on the air. Hello. 
Yo, I want to hear John John finish. Oh, jeez. Oh. See, the first call I take in the, in the new year, Terry, the first random caller is, uh... It's nice to hear a drunk guy at 6 in the morning. <laughs> yes, it makes him feel better about his life. Isn't that right, sir? What's your name? My name's Kiki. And your your life is pretty good, right, Kiki? But when you hear John John on the line, your life becomes just absolutely, unbelievably big time, doesn't it? It becomes that much better. Yes, I understand. So you would like John John to complete his guarantee? Of course. All right, how about I personalize it for you, Kiki? Sure, sounds great. Okay, John, John. Well, in two, well, in two thousand and five, I did have a resolution as striking New Year's Eve going into January first. I would say to myself, I'm going to slow down on the booze, don't you know? But, but <laughs> for T Man, I know you're having a kid, and she's a wonderful lady. Right. And I hope <laughs> one thing your boy That's does better. for you. Yeah. Kiki, you in the freaking nuts yes. and says, T Man, mm -hmm. stop us to play and look at Terry Free okay. and she got in vitro. That's all I gotta say for okay. at this now, moment. Now Kiki, was that was that worth it for you? That was that made my week. Okay, well, there you go. Where did the guarantee part come in? Yeah, uh, where did I think it was all guarantees, okay. all the way through. And John John made it clear, and I think this is actually a big moment on the program, don't you know? Not really. That uh, he is going to stay away from the booze in 2005, Terry. So how long is this that going to last? It's breaking news. This fresh <laughs> off the wires, Terry. John John is going to stay away from uh, he's going to stay away from alcohol in 2005. So are we betting on this? <laughs> Uh-oh. I mean... <laughs> Terry Free doesn't sound very convinced. <laughs> I mean, I think we should, you know. Mm. So you have your misgivings, Terry. You have your doubts as to whether John John can maintain this resolution for more than uh, how long? A couple minutes? Uh, yeah. How do you? <laughs> Maybe five. Of that. course, with your doubts comes uh, in tandem, Terry, with the doubts of the arch enemy, Terry. It's a new year, but yet the, the enemies remain the same on this program. Of course, the hotline ringing, and guess who's on it? Oh, He's boy. a gay phone operator. He's so gay. He's so phone operator. And now, here's gay. A good morning. Good morning. Yeah, five minutes. That's all I asked, Terry. Five <laughs> minutes into the new year, and I was hoping maybe we wouldn't hear from every regular that we've ever known on the program. Uh-huh. But we couldn't even get to five minutes. No. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to have one. <laughs> yes, gay. Uh, he's going to stay away from booze, just like I'm going to stay away from buffets. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try. Well, at least you're learning so about it's yourself. Not happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <sighs> now, I, I would ordinarily be tempted to put these two on together, Terry. But, you know, it's a new year. Yeah, it do, is. Do we need it this quick in 2005? Let's make a new New Year's resolution and not even talk to either one of them. Oh, geez. <laughs> I always like to hear them. <laughs> Hot Shots nodding, yes. Terry. Hot Shots going, yeah, put them on together. Put them on together. <laughs> new Year crap, put them on together. A gay. You heard John John, and I think it's very uh, not only noble, but it is admirable. It is... Uh, it is encouraging to hear that his New Year's resolution is to stay away from alcohol. And instead of taunting him, you should commend him that at least he has positive thoughts and goals. And he has uh, a path that he's at least trying to take strides down. And maybe you should take a page out of his book and make goals for yourself. And make yeah, a, a lot of alcoholics try not to drink again and again and again and again and again. Man, it's people like you that make their road a lot tougher. Oh, tell him to try another step, okay? Mm hmm no. I think he can do it, and I think he will. And I think it's because of people like you <laughs> that'll be the ultimate reason why he succeeds. Yeah, right. Mm. To prove anything. you wrong. Oh, yeah, he wants to prove me wrong. The sober John John, by July of this year, will laugh in your face. Your okay. chubby 390-pound face. Wow. 390. Well, you will by July. No, I won't. What are you weighing now after the holidays and oh, such? Oh, boy. I don't know. Uh -huh. I've not even gotten on the scale, and I'm not going to. Uh-oh. Geez. Yeah, well, you haven't gotten on the scale lately because you realize that T-Man wanted to give you $15,000, and you haven't had a chance to even drop a pound or two in the last year. Have you, gay? Well. Okay, you're so drunk you don't even know what's been said on the uh, show. Do I sound really year. drunk? No, Mike. 
he, he doesn't sound as, as drunk gay because it's a new year. There's a new calendar, and John John is a new man with a new attitude. Yeah, he's going to pretend to be straight now, too. Uh -huh. I'm not going to... Completely be straight, but I still love every bitch is out there like you, bitch. And I guarantee it. I want to know by October of your birthday of 2005, can you <laughs> lose the weight yeah. and drop down to be under 225 and get $15,000 that Okay, uh, Terry. Yes. Uh, you were telling us about other things going on in the world. Please, I'm yes, begging you. What, what, what else has happened? Well, I was have telling a good day. Oh, oh geez. wow. Are you still there? I am. Okay, have a great. <laughs> New York Daily News is reporting that uh, Britney Spears has hired a younger, hipper manager. Um, she, I guess she got rid of her old one mm. because she wants this new guy to uh, turn her husband into a rap superstar. Well, mm -hmm. well that's terrific. We could uh, probably get a comment or two from this new younger hipper manager, but they're currently on a 14-day cruise, Terry, so they're unavailable <laughs> for comment. Okay. Because that's the, that's the end thing. Of course. The 14-day cruise. 14 days. you got to be at sea for no uh, shorter than 13 days. Mm. Plus, you're not getting your money's worth. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, she claims that her husband can really flow. Mm. He'd be a great rapper. Oh, well, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to hear the flow. Oh, can't either. Can't wait, can't wait to see uh, the New Year's resolution for uh, Mr. Federline come true in 2005, that he's the bigger and better rapper than even Eminem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It can happen, ladies and gentlemen, don't you know? <laughs> I know you can see it, too. We all can envision it happening. I wonder if Britney will be his backup dancer, then, if he's, you know, rapping just, and stuff. Mm -hmm. That would be something new, huh? Uh, yeah. It'd be a reversal of fortune in some sense, wouldn't you know? Uh-huh. All right. Be like, kind of like Stephen getting a little control in his, uh, in his marriage. A little bit. Yes. <laughs> Well, I shouldn't say that, Terry. He's not here to defend himself and say, well, you're just a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, he'll be back, I, I believe, on Monday, Terry, but we're back today, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot has changed in the past uh, two weeks, right? Yes. Ashley Simpson, didn't she get booed terribly at the Rose Bowl? Big or time. the Orange Bowl? Yes. One of those bowls? Yep. Big time. Man. Mm -hmm. If she's not in severe with all that's gone on, if she's not in severe depression, Terry, with Saturday Night Live and now getting booed and hearing people in the background going, You suck! <laughs> yeah. Then I don't know what it'll take. Mm hmm Huh. Was she that bad? I didn't see the performance. Do we have that? We have yeah. some of it? Yes. Oh. Oh, we have some of it, Terry. Jeez. We have some of the footage. All right. Do I need to ask if she was that bad? I mean, aren't we used to her being that bad by now? Isn't that the deal? Yeah, I would I would say yes, but then again. This is a whole new audience of uh, people exposed to her for the first time at the Orange Bowl that aren't her necessarily quintessential P1 fans. Right. That they heard her sing, and they were just like, Make it stop! <laughs> hmm. Well, we'll have to play that in a little bit, too, Terry. We'll have to get caught up on all the stuff that's been going on. Yes, we will. He's T. Oh, geez. He's mad. I don't you know. He's the T man. That's so true. On Seattle's number one hit music station, Cube 93. Powers to the... Six three T man. He's a great guy. I'm lucky. Sienna Miller gushing over Alfie co-star Jude Law, the mm. man she met on the set of the film. But are the two now officially engaged? Oh, yes, they oh, are. Oh, good. I was hoping you'd say that, please. Yes, Jude Law is the sexiest man alive, Terry, don't you know? Wow. Well, that's according to People Magazine. You you, uh, you saw that, right? I'm sure you were one of the voters. Oh, yeah, for Jude? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I saw that, but was not voting for him. You're right. You, you were not uh, in agreement with I mean, Jude Law being the sexiest man alive? He's very sexy, no doubt. Talking really loud in there! <laughs> Yes, they are. Take a look at The Rock. Sienna was out this morning in London walking her dog and her $30,000 ring. Oh, you're English. Uh. Yes, he's English, Terry. Okay. So is Omar Epps.
Oh. Yeah. Who uh, got your vote for the 16th consecutive year for Sexiest Man Alive, right? Of course. Okay. Always. Mm. And forever, Terry. Mm-hmm. Always and forever. Yep. You and Omar Raps. That's very nice, Terry. You're consistently uh, a fan of his, and I'm sure he appreciates it. Sure he does. <laughs> but Jude Law Still is sexy. the sexiest man alive, according to uh, People. People Magazine. You don't see him as kind of a... Mm, a frail little guy. Don't you think the sexiest man alive should should have a little body mass? Well, I mean, I think that because uh, well, it doesn't sound like good. it sounds like if they were going to choose a white guy, you're cool with Jude Law. I am cool oh, with Jude Law. Yeah, and I'm asking you because I don't see the the anger or the disappointment in your eyes, Terry. Uh, I, I'm asking you. Don't you think that you should be a little disappointed? Don't you think that the sexiest man alive should have a little weight? Well, <laughs> I mean, it's literally a little weight behind him. He doesn't, I guess to me, he doesn't look too, too thin or... Have you seen Jude Law, Terry? Yes, I have. I probably haven't seen his, you know, his entire body and, and really take, take a note as to, you know, how thick he is or buff or oh, anything geez. like that. But, I mean... It's a disgrace, Terry. Okay. A man couldn't... It doesn't look like he breaks 140. Mm. But, uh, whatever. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Oh, I what? lost again this year, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> I had some write-in votes, but... What else is going on, Terry? What else is happening, please? A Cleveland man is suing NBC's Fear Factor for $2.5 million because of the trauma he experienced while watching it. And that's a buff guy, Terry. Is he? <laughs> I'm probably feeling pretty sure. Huh? Apparently, he feels he got he was traumatized after seeing contestants eat rats on Fear Factor. Mm, it's another thing on Fear Factor, huh? Yeah, eating disgusting. Gross he'd been things. watching it for uh, for six years, but he'd never seen him eat anything gross. <laughs> so it caught him by surprise. Obviously, and he's suing for two point five. Yes, he is. Yes, mm-hmm. it's worth every penny. I'm sure. I'm sure he'll uh, he'll get that and then some by a very. Uh, astute jury who will realize that the man was in fact traumatized and deserves every bit of that money. Jeez. Apparently, he vomited after watching the whole rat incident and then, like, passed out and hit his head on the doorway while attem- attempting to. And in this statement, he says, snails, centipedes, rodents, uh, roaches, fine, rats, I'm out of here. Yeah, right. Can't take it. <laughs> Fish eyeballs, all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Are they really eating rats? Yes. Jeez. That's what they do on that show. Mm. <laughs> Apparently he won't talk about it either unless it's, quote, a paid interview situation. <laughs> rats are pretty big, uh, little rodent there. I mean, did he did he have to watch them eating the rats with a knife and a fork, or how, how, do, how do you eat rats? I don't know. Do you saute them? <laughs> I like to the flambe them, actually. Smoked? <laughs> What? Uh, spigot and I mean, you don't need them. You don't need them. You don't put them in. Well, I don't we need to discuss it. I'm about to pass out. Look out. <laughs> Watch yes. out. Hurry, Hot let's sue. Hot shot's looking a little woozy. <laughs> yes, yeah. he is. So what is he saying? He was watching and what? His remote control wasn't working? He couldn't change the channel? Right. Apparently he just got so... Uh, Let me see the story, please. He vomited, got all dizzy, and... I'll tell you exactly what happened here. Okay. Right after I ruffle the paper a little bit. Okay. Uh, now I can't even read it. <laughs> His name is Austin Aiken. Uh-huh. A distant relative of Clay. <laughs> and uh, he's a paralegal. Did you say that, Terry? I did not say that he was a paralegal. He's no. a paralegal, Terry. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And he believes the trauma is worth $2.5 million, Terry, and he should know he's a paralegal. Mm-hmm. And according to his lawsuit, which he has handed in to the courts, handwritten. I know, <laughs> His blood pressure rose so quickly and so abruptly that he became dizzy and lightheaded before he had time to change the channel. Enough so that he hit his head on the doorway while attempting to run away from his room. (laughs) So, Terry, he made two attempts to get away from Fear Factor. (laughs) Two. He made an attempt to grab the remote control Uh and uh, realized it was a futile effort because his blood pressure had risen so fast that he had no ability to grab on to anything and use it in a functional fashion. And when he realized, okay, I can't grab the remote control and press the little buttons because I'm too emotionally uh, wrecked by this quick experience that is now just... 
taken over my body. Mm -hmm. He tried to run away, Terry, because that doesn't require much technique. <laughs> and he couldn't do that either. Oh, no. And he hit his head in the doorway. <laughs> and his lawsuit states to have the individuals on that show eat dead rats was so crazy from this viewer's point of view that it made me throw up as well as others in my house at the same time. So there was vomit in tandem <laughs> wow. at the Aiken house. Jeez. And because of that, he's going to be suing for $2.5 million. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck, sir. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. How about you just don't watch Fear Factor, dude? Okay. <laughs> well, Terry, sometimes you flip through the challenge, you don't know what you're watching. By the time he realized what he was watching, he was uh, face down on the floor, mm. passed out, near death, needing to be revived. Mm -hmm. Paramedics over him, clear, you know, it could happen. Sure. And it did apparently happen, and the man is going to be richer for it. <laughs> so maybe in the long run, it's going to be worth his while, because I'm sure a, a sensible jury will realize they have no choice but to hand him two and a half million dollars. <laughs> Wouldn't you, Terry, on that jury? Oh, yeah. Okay. So why stop there? How about ten million? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Give him the world. <laughs> okay. Maybe we will. Maybe we will. <laughs> what else is going on? What else do you have? William Hung is making his uh, debut as an international movie star in a movie called Where is Mama's Boy? It's mm -hmm. a Chinese movie. It's a Chinese movie? It opens uh, Thursday in Singapore. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it'll be fighting Jet Li in that movie? <laughs> Maybe so. That'd be quite the battle, Terry. Yeah. He's come pretty far, though. You got to give him credit. Huh? William Hung. Right. Bad singer to a movie star now. Made a lot of people throw up, Terry. I don't know <laughs> anyone that got $2.5 million because of uh, the audition he gave on, on American Idol. Yeah. So you tell me, where's the justice? Where's the sensibility, Terry? Now, I have people on the phone lines, Terry, who say they saw the episode of uh, people eating rats on Fear Factor, and we can get their thoughts if you'd like. I, I don't know if they want their $2.5 million. I don't know if they're going to say, T-Man, yes, you've seen Fear Factor, but this one was so above and beyond anything you've ever seen. I can't imagine that being the case. Right. What could they do on Fear... Actually, the ratings on Fear Factor, I'm reading this year, are so down because people have seen it all. There's nothing they can do anymore to make people astonished or amazed. You're on the air. Hello. Hey, T-Man. Yes, sir. Okay, listen up. Oh, man. I saw the show. Yes. And what they did was they had a hot dog cart on the streets of New York like they served those dogs. Yes. Hot dogs. Yes. And they picked up the rats. There were two contestants each that had to compete at the same time. Right. The the rats were beheaded, and they were it dipped in this some type of a liquid puree crap. Yeah. Well, or chocolate sauce. See, either one is usual. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, and then they stuck the entire rat inside a blender, blended it up in front of the contestant, poured that. Thick, it was like oatmeal. Do you think at this <laughs> point, do you think this is the point where Austin Aiken uh, <laughs> makes a mad dash to another room and hits his head on the way out and passes out? Or, or uh, is is there something that happens? Is it the no. actual eating of it? Is it the no, blending it, or the eating? It was the, the grinding, if you got me, that was grosser than them just eating it because they spooned it and just, I mean, ate it fast. Yes. They just hold it down. And yet Bill Cosby would call it yellow and uh, <laughs> make a fortune on promoting it, Terry. That's right. Now, let me ask you this. You okay. are uh, a Fear Factor fan. Do you watch it on some kind of regular basis or what? I, I really do, T-Man, okay, every now, Monday. Okay, now, was this anything that struck you as way beyond what you're used to in watching Fear Factor or what? Absolutely it, not. Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. This if is regular me, Monday right. TV for you. Right. Exactly. If you ask me, I've seen grosser stints so, uh, so, on the Fear Factor. So obviously this is just a quest by someone out there to try to turn uh, the courtrooms of America into their own personal lottery ticket, right or Absolutely. wrong? Absolutely. Right, right. Okay. Absolutely. And if this person, this this Austin Aiken out there somewhere and who knows where, if he gets $2.5 million, something's wrong with the world is what you're saying. 
something is way wrong. Okay, it's just fine Monday entertainment to you. <laughs> Absolutely. That's well, I, I actually cracked up. I was cracking up at watching them force <laughs> that crap down. Uh-huh. Are you a mom? <laughs> I am a mom. I have two little girls. You have two little... Where are your two little girls while you're watching uh, strangers eating rat heads? <laughs> they are in Pure their room. They're watching at... 42. Channel 42. They're in, they're... Terry, Terry knows what Channel 42 is. What's Channel 42, Terry? Uh, Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network. Yeah. Really? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tiny Toons. <laughs> well, well, I'm glad there's a sensible person out there who realizes <coughs> that this just may be a frivolous lawsuit that uh, somebody out there has filed. I can't believe people out there are filing lawsuits that really have no merit, Terry. Jeez. Give me a break. Okay. He should have just did what you said, T-Man. Flip the freaking channel to CNN News and call it a night. What are you wearing? <laughs> but he, but he, as T Man read, he he tried to change the channel, but he she, was. She too, didn't answer to her. Oh, she I, didn't answer. But he got too dizzy and couldn't. Know, baby. Oh God! Yes, he tried. He desperately tried. And tried to run out of the room, and that's when he hit his head mm -hmm. on the doorway. Oh, I remember I did that Whatever. when I when I saw the first episode of Fantasy Island when I was nine years old, Terry, and uh, oh, yeah? I heard the play. The play. <laughs> I got scared. <laughs> I didn't know I could sue for $2.5 million at the time, Terry. You're listening to The T-Man Show on Seattle's number one hit music station. Cube 93. The T-Man Show. 663 t man you loved her in the Fokker movies. Now will you be seeing a lot more of funny blonde Terry Polo oh. on the pages of Playboy. Right. Yep, you'll see it all. That's great. Terry not only graces the issue with an eight-page layout, she's on the cover, too. The Polo Playboy goes public late this month. So we're talking about the one who Ben Stiller was marrying and meet the Fockers. Mm. We're talking about uh, her, and she's having an eight-page layout in Playboy wow. in the upcoming weeks. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not the mom of the one Ben Stiller's marrying, because that's the one I was hoping for, Terry. Oh, boy, me too. <laughs> Isn't that Gwyneth Paltrow's mom? Yes. Blythe, oh, Blythe Danner. Is that her name? Mm -hmm. What's her name? Blythe Danner. Blythe? Blythe Danner. Yes. Yes. We can't get her in an eight-page layout, Terry? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. Okay. <laughs> well, we can still dare to dream, can't we? Sure. All right. So an eight-page spread for Terry Polo, is that her name? Mm -hmm. There you have it. Hmm. Riding on a horse naked with a big <laughs> polo-looking mallet or whatever they call that thing. <laughs> That's the way I would do it. Anyhow, what else is going on, Terry? What else do you have there? We have Hotshot, by the way, just informed me. So not only is Steven uh, on a 14-day cruise and not with us for the next two days, but Hotshot is basically... On a reserve tank because he is very, very sick. Oh, great. Threw up all day. night long, yes. He can just enjoy spreading the germs all throughout the show, Terry. Great. That's, I guess, why he came in. Oh, super. Realizing my baby is seconds away from being born, the first thing Jaden wants to be introduced to when he uh, enters the world is hot shots germs. Right. Yeah, but you're not I'm, giving birth, so you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you're telling me you were throwing up all night long. Correct. And uh, wh what is the reason for this? Not sure. But my body's been rendered useless. Oh, geez. Well, that was that was years ago. <laughs> but anyway, so last night you were throwing up. How many times would you say through it? Twenty. Oh, geez. What? You have to count, Terry. Well, and he's yeah, sitting here next to well, us. But I don't think it's like a flu thing. I think it's just some kind of food poisoning. No, I think it's like a twenty-four hour stomach virus going around that's uh, highly contagious and terribly uh, de debilitating. And you're going to give it to everyone here. Wow. And I'm not lying about that. I've heard about it. It's going around. Mm. You don't have food poisoning. Well, I think I'm past the contagious point. You were just throwing up last night. Well, there's nothing All left inside. All through the All the germs are gone, man. Oh, there's nothing left inside. <laughs> uh -huh. Sounds like you're writing a new song. Oh, here's a, li a little sip of water. <laughs> oh, <I like> that. <laughs> so you couldn't even keep down water. This is no. nice. And he's sitting here like it's no big deal. Now, is the number of 20, is that a round number? Or as I pointed out, did you actually keep count? No, I kept count. You kept count? Yeah. But it's like increments of four. Uh huh. <laughs> so you don't know whether to count the increments of four as one or four? Yeah, it's not as one. It's one time and four different streams. All right. <laughs> Thanks for, for the clarification. And that, that is, in your mind, counted as four different. Correct. Okay. So you that's how you got to the number 20. Mm -hmm. And the last time you uh, 
You threw up was when? Mm, 10 o'clock, maybe? 10.30? 10.30 last night. Yeah. Okay. So I think I'm okay. You didn't throw up all through this past night. No, I threw up like 1 o'clock in the afternoon until 10 o'clock at night yesterday. All right. But I was up all night. Okay, I'm glad we got this very, very clear. Wow. Yeah. Well, I don't think I'm contagious. Terry's got, you Terry's got <laughs> infants that have been struggling their whole life so far. Yeah, thank you. Well, that's for other reasons. <laughs> I got one on the move, and you're coming in here spreading all your trips. It's very considerate. Yeah, it is. And your body and your uh, your whole wacky personality has been rendered useless this morning. Correct. Okay. An absolute pile right now. All right. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the live show. <laughs> Terry, what do you have over there to uh, enlighten us with here in this new year of 2005? Where the Seattle Seahawks, by the way, we have five pairs of tickets because I guess they're, really? you know what's really astonishing? They sold out every home game this year. They can't sell out the playoff game. <laughs> I know. That is so So ridiculous. we have five pairs of Seahawks playoff. I think it's really cool that the game's on Saturday for some reason. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I kind of like that idea. Get it out of the way for the weekend. There you go. Go right into the way. I'm, I have uh, tickets that I bought. I, I thought I would have a hard time buying them. No. No. <laughs> but when I saw how much they charged me, I got an idea that maybe this is part of the raising. Yeah. All right. Now, I probably bought more expensive tickets than the uh, the, the average, average ticket. The, you, know, you know how much a ticket cost, or at least the ones on the ones I'm in possession of? No. And, and I paid for them. I'm not the, the guy who calls the Seahawks and says, hey, uh, you give me free tickets. I'll say some nice things about you in here. No. Right. That's not me. I'd rather pay than be indebted to people. I don't like to be in, I like people to be indebted to me. I don't want to be indebted to anyone. Right. So I actually went and bought tickets and paid an obscene price. Are you going to tell me the obscene well, price? I'm, or I'm what? embarrassed to even tell you. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Did you get an aisle seat though out of the deal? I do have an aisle seat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Got to pay extra for those aisles. <laughs> right. Now, are you, are you taking the wife with you? No, Terry. She's nine oh, months. She's like God. 16 months pregnant, Terry. No, I know that, she but I didn't home. know if, if, you know, she would, she usually goes She again. stays home to have the baby by herself. Oh, great. While I'm watching the Seahawks <laughs> in what, uh, I, I don't know, is if it's going to be a win or a loss. I, I have no idea at this point. At this point, I have no clue. I do have every understanding of the fact that I paid, like, scalper money for a face value price. Now, try to guess, Terry, how much these tickets cost for Saturday's game. Um, well, let's see. I would say probably about a grand a piece. A grand? Oh, no, Terry, you're way off of it. Well, I don't know. They're not charging a grand on a... I didn't see a grand on a ticket. Right, right. Well, you... That's just $1,000 <laughs> for a wild card game. Okay, 700 No, Terry, you're still way off. Oh, okay. I, well, obviously, I, I built it up so much that you've gotten crazy here. Yeah, you Barbara did. Barbara Streisand and Neil Diamond touring. Well, well, even that, you would have to go to a scalper and have to pay that right. much. I was going to guess like maybe 200 250 I've never seen any sporting event, concert, Broadway show, anything that uh, had a ticket value, a face value for the ticket of $354. Mm. Terry's like, oh, that's nothing after what I threw out there. Well, <laughs> I have no idea. Three hundred and fifty four dollars a ticket. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. But uh that's what it costs, so gotta have the aisle seat. There you go. <laughs> but this could be the only game Terry once again so far off. Look look how embarrassing. I, I don't yeah. I am this could be the only game this year that won't even be broadcasted on TV in Seattle because they haven't sold out the game. That makes sense. If they don't sell out the game, if they don't sell the remaining 5,000 tickets by 1.30 this afternoon, mm -hmm. the game will not be shown in this city. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Last week, they're playing the Atlanta Falcons. They've already wrapped up a playoff spot. Yes, there was something at stake in winning the division, but still, they had wrapped up a, wrapped up a playoff spot, and the game was completely sold out. Now they're in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> the say. game's on Saturday, national TV. The whole nation will be watching, except Seattle, unless they sell 5,000 tickets today. Eh, nah, boring. <laughs> I don't want to watch that. I just wanted to watch them get there. <laughs> right. Wow. But being in the uh, this now 16-team tournament heading to the Super Bowl is not something anyone's interested in. <laughs> right. God. Well, it could be because, A, it's going to be pro probably freezing cold on Saturday. B, they did jack up the tickets to uh, significantly more than the regular season tickets were were costing people. Mm. 
and C, maybe people just don't want to feel like they want to be there if the season should come to a crashing halt. But the Seahawks are favored mm. against a team that has uh, beaten them twice already this year. So you do the math. Who's going to win? Mm. Fearless coming down? Outies. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, cool. You need not worry. As far as trying to figure out who's going to win this game on Saturday afternoon because the fearless forecaster is scheduled to come in tomorrow uh, morning, Terry. Yeah! Nice. If you can work the, some things out in the schedule. Oh, okay. He'll be down here. Good deal. He is a blind mute, Terry, mm -hmm. so it's hard for him to work things out just in his own schedule, Terry, because just uh, <laughs> finding his schedule is tough for him. You're right. Okay. But he'll tell you who's going to win this game before the game is even underway. Very good. Now, what else is going on in the world, Terry? The Consumers Union, which is a nonprofit organization, has announced the most durable condom for everybody. Now, what's going to happen? Are they going to sell out this game or not? No. 5,000 tickets by 1.30 this afternoon? Unless Paul Allen or somebody steps up and buys them all, That's, which has happened in the past. That has happened in the past, and uh, some corporation or Paul Allen should try to work this situation in with the whole tsunami thing it's very uh the thing to do obviously and it's the right thing to do to be aiding those who have been through a devastating catastrophic situation mm -hmm. so isn't there a way to tie in the buying of the last five thousand tickets with uh, helping those in tsunami areas there's got to be a way it's got to be a way Paul Allen buys his own tickets, mm -hmm. gives the money to the to the charities that help the tsunami, and hands them out on the street. Sounds there you good. go. The boys Perfect. and girls club. So what are you waiting for, Paul? We oh. figured it out in ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> quit, quit building UFOs and do okay. something productive. All right? And then there everyone can watch the game on Saturday. There you go. Otherwise, you're gonna have to drive to Portland to see the game. <laughs> wow. Now, what are you telling me, Terry? They've uh... the most durable condom has been found. <laughs> I'm sorry, now what? The most durable condom. It's official? Yes. This just special. in? Mm-hmm. They have uh, officially named the most the most durable condom. What does that mean, the most durable condom? It's it's what? It, well, they tested the condoms by filling them with air to gauge their uh, reliability. And, and this was the most unbreakable mm -hmm. condom that the world has. This one was able to house more water or more air. volume of air or liquid mm -hmm. so that it could s expand to such a degree with without breaking over all the others. Right. And you're about to tell us, Terry, yes. the official news on what one as the most durable condom that the world knows. Right. Well, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Okay. This is big news. It is, actually. Uh -huh. I could be a person who, who's used the wrong condom all along, Terry, and then Ooh. I'd feel foolish. I've never really used condoms. <laughs> and I don't think anyone has today. <laughs> but anyhow. Yes. This is still uh, big time news. Mm -hmm. A major announcement of some sort. The most durable condom, as discovered by researchers and lab technicians, is... The Durex Extra Sensitive Lubricated Latex Condom. Yeah, whatever. So anticlimactic. No. <laughs> okay. Do you want the runners up, runner up, runners no. up? Oh, geez. I want them all three. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's the what now? The most durable condom is the Durex what? Extra sensitive lubricated. And this study Latex was condom. performed by the fine folks at Durex condoms. No, by the Consumers Union. Oh, by the Consumers Union. Yes. And they discovered that the Durex extra lubricated, Perf extra wide extra what? Sensitive. Extra sensitive. sensitive. <laughs> now, this all sounds well and good, Terry, but I ask you one question. What's that? Can it functionally house the massiveness of Pasty Dave the Virgin? I don't know. It doesn't have... He has a magnum, oh, as right. he's told us. <laughs> yes, he does. He's the best kept secret in the world, Terry. I know. Just like the Seahawks will be this weekend. He's the <laughs> best kept secret in Seattle, Terry. Wow. Because he is a virgin. <laughs> but he has never been touched by human hands. Mm-hmm. True. And, uh, I mean, he he has a magnum, and he's never been touched by human hands. So I ask again, Terry. Yes, it's been officially announced that the Durex Extra Sensitive, Extra Wide, Extra Durable uh, <laughs> condom is the most... 
high-grade performance condom in the world. Mm -hmm. But can it safely house the massiveness of Pasty Dave? <laughs> has that been discovered yet, Terry? I don't think it has. Oh! <laughs> well, back to the labs, please. <laughs> yes, they must go. <laughs> what was the runner-up, Terry? The runner-up was a Durex Performance. That's Bazooka Bubblegum. Yeah, where does the Safeway bag fall in? Hey, right. <laughs> <laughs> Was the Durex Performix <sighs> Lubricated Lifestyle Classic Collection. Great. Boy, oh, boy. So Durex did pretty well there. Yeah, they did. Is that right? They make a great brand. Oh, that's exciting. Isn't it? Oh, I can't tell you, Terry. <laughs> <sighs> Man. Okay. Very okay. pasty to the test. <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out whether to give Seahawk tickets away right now or later. Oh. I'm going to give some away right now. You're on the air. Hello? Yes. Um, I need Seahawks tickets. Maybe you need Seahawk tickets. Maybe yeah. you want Seahawk tickets, but there's no need. You're not going to die. You're not going to uh, uh, suffer some traumatic uh, situation in your life if you don't go to the Seahawks game Saturday, right or wrong. I mean, oh, it's I, hard to say in this time husband. of our lives that you need Seahawks tickets when 140,000 people just died of a catastrophic tsunami uh, situation over in, uh, wh wh what area of the world do we call that? Is that Asia? Yeah, it's like Thailand. Okay, fine. Obviously. Yeah, I know. That was really All right, so don't give, me, don't give me I need, okay? Well, my my husband works every single Sunday, so he never gets to watch the football games, ever. And if it doesn't sell out, he's going to be heartbroken that he didn't get to watch the game this Saturday. Well, then if that's the case, then he should feel the same applies to others, and he should uh, feel as though that he has to do his part to make sure that others don't uh, fall into that situation. He should go buy tickets today. I know, but come Okay, on. so there's our answer. Thanks for the call. <laughs> wow. Buy tickets. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. This guy should be saying, well, I wouldn't want to sit in front of a blank TV on Saturday, and because of that, I wouldn't want anyone else to have to do that. So let me go out and buy tickets to make sure no one has to go through that uh, horrifying situation. Sure. 5,000 tickets available, Terry. Wow. They all don't cost uh, $354 a ticket, trust me. Mm -hmm. There are some seats that are going to be uh, snowblown, uh, fine viewing seats. <laughs> That cost, I'm sure, about 30 bucks. So go do your part to make sure people aren't suffering this weekend because they need to be a part of the game. I'd rather give these tickets to, uh, away to somebody who says, Tim, I could care less if it's on TV and I just uh, have nothing to do Saturday. <laughs> You're on the air. Hello. Good morning, T Man and Terry. Good morning. And Hot Shot Scott. Hey. It's about time you guys got back to work. Hmm. Hey, listen, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a single dad, and, you know, I don't get that much chance to go out with my boys. And um, I, we need tickets bad. You know, we're, we're diehard fans. And although, you know, we, we, have some, we could do other things on Saturday, we, we really would love to go and watch the Seahawks play. We're, we'd love it. Where are your kids going to be? With me. And uh, how many tickets do you expect us to give you for <laughs> you and your entire family? Well, just three. Are you going to leave them outside the stadium while you, uh, while you watch the game? Because we have five pairs of tickets, but we're not giving you more than one if we decide to give you a pair, sir. Okay. All right. Well, fair enough. Then I'll leave them at home. To do what? Oh, what were to you fend for themselves, to, to cause havoc in the neighborhood. To... No, they're too young. They're only six and nine. I mean, no, th they'd love to go, but... So you're going you know, to you're they... tell me to give you tickets so you can leave your six and nine-year-olds alone in the house while you sit there drinking beer after beer, screaming hey, man, at I, Seahawks players. I would players never to... leave them at home alone. You that's, just said you just... would. Who, who, no, who... no, no, they'll, they'll, they'll be with my sister, of course, but... What but, happened to wanting to spend time with your yeah, son? Yeah, did well, you I say do, that? I, if, if, you can only, if you can only give me one, one pair, then, I mean, I, I'm, they're, they're going to have to make, you know, they're going to have to take one for the team, right? But <laughs> now, what about your poor sister? All of a sudden, she's been elected to be the babysitter of these kids on Saturday afternoon. Maybe she had a nice museum to go visit on Saturday. You ever think of that? Nah, she doesn't have anything to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but I, I, I would pay her anyways, team man. I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's what I do, so... Right. How much do you pay when you uh, when you hire a babysitter to take care of your uh, your out of control six and nine year old? <laughs> I think I'd probably give about twenty, thirty bucks to my sister to take care of him. Mm -hmm. And Which uh, is not, that's pretty good. That's, that's not, not twenty, bad. thirty bucks an hour. That's no, for no, the no, whole that's, that's... encompassing afternoon. 
Right, right. Well, I wouldn't. The, the the game would consist for me would consist of me going there right. and then coming back. So we're talking five hours, six hours. So yes. So five, six hours. Let's say six hours because with traffic, he's mm-hmm. uh, in the Definitely. south end, Terry. Sure. He's going to drive to the game. He's going to get loaded. He's going to have to have a little uh, after the game cooling off period. We're talking a minimum of six hours. That's five dollars an hour. That's less than minimum wage. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't do that to any woman out there who's going All to right, be her, subjected to dollars. watching your kids. I will give her forty-two dollars. She let Terry just got her a race. Wow. You'll give her $42. Oh, the big spender has now stepped up to $7 an hour, Terry. Whoa. What is there the... has been a raise. Lately, there has been a raise. I'll give her 50 bucks, you man. Wow. Why don't you just... You know he's lying now. No, no, I'm really I'm not lying. Yeah, you I'll are. never call you. You are, you are but it's, it's kind of cool that you want the ticket so bad that you're willing to lie and make it feel... make your, You're convincing yourself that we're believing this. You're not paying her 50 bucks. As a matter of fact, I doubt she'd even get a dollar if she watches your kids over the weekend. Be honest. Yeah, you're probably right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, now that's so wrong. No, but I, she I, she has a baby, too, and I, I babysit her daughter once in a while, so it's an even trade-off. But I mean, we can't, I, we gonna... can't even confirm that your sister's able to watch your kids. Well, I, I, well, let's call her then. Let's call her right now. Let's call her right now. All right, 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 let's and then she needs to name her price, if that's the oh, case. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, she we'll needs her price. price. All right, yeah. Put, put her on. Put them on hold. Get the number. Call his sister. Maybe, she, my... maybe she's hot, Terry. <laughs> maybe she is. Yeah. Maybe she can watch me Saturday afternoon. <laughs> and you'll pay $9 an hour. I'll give them my tickets. <laughs> yeah. All right. Get the number. We'll, uh, want to call her right now? How far behind am I? Wait. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> How can I be that far behind already? Uh, Give me the number real quick. Hurry up. <laughs> what line was this dude on? Are you there, sir? Yes, sir. Is this you? Yes, it is. What's your sister's name? Audrey. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's your name? Nick. You guys close? Pardon me? You guys close? Yes, we are. When, when you were raised, you guys were close? Did you ever spy on her? Did you do all the brotherly things uh, or what? Yeah, not, not really, no. Uh-huh. Hi, sorry that we... Well, but Audrey's not home. Oh, damn. Nick. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Nick! Audrey's so, not home. So he is home, T-Man. <clears throat> Call again, please. So don't blame, all, don't blame uh, me... No, Tina, please call again. She's For home, not buddy. giving you tickets. I... Blame Audrey. That's even worse that she was home and she didn't have the energy to pick up the phone. Obviously, it's not in the cards for you to be at the game on Sunday. No, no, no. It, is, also... it is in the cards. It is in the cards, see, man. She's just, right now, she's no, probably... No, I'm looking at the cards. <laughs> You're not running... looking at the cards. She was probably running to the phone right when we were, right when the phone no. answered like that. It's she not heard... in the cards. She just repeat, me, re- man. Re- you want to... I've been waiting for you guys to come back and come back to work for so long. I've been missing right. you. She um, heard what you were going to pay and said, I'm not answering the Dude, phone. Dude, yeah. If she is at home, then she's <laughs> listening and she doesn't want to answer the phone. So obviously she doesn't feel like it's that big a deal that you need to be at the game on Sunday. She so think it's so a big I'll deal. take her word for it and I'll move on to somebody else. Yeah, All right, Nick? Great weekend. Nick, Nick? Nick I was going to give it. I was going to give them to you too, dude. So close. Listen, I'm All right? man but, I, I need these tickets, man. And I, I will do... I don't know. I probably won't do just As a anything. consolation <laughs> prize. <laughs> as a that. consolation prize. I have a package of uh, extra sensitive Durex condoms for oh, you, nice. sir. Woo-hoo! All right? Big winner, big winner. It's the most elastic condom in the world. <laughs> Not sure if they're pasty proof. Uh-huh. <laughs> but they could be. <laughs> Congratulations and hang on for that, sir. Okay? Uh, All okay. right. There he goes. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Terry, I got five pairs of tickets i got to give away. Terry. I know you do. And yet no one's stepping up to the plate. Oh. No one's sister is coming through for them. He's T. He's man. That's right. He's the T man. How did that? Seattle's number one hit music station, Cube 93. I, I think we could be making history mm. as far as the National Football League is concerned to be the only team in the history of the NFL to sell out all the regular season home games and have them all broadcasted on TV. And then your team makes the playoffs and people are like, nah. Never mind. I'm cool. Maybe next year. <laughs> because that's where we are right now, Terry. Wow.
The Seahawks for the first time, I believe it's since 1999. Mm. It was the last time they had a home playoff game. The last time they had a playoff game in Seattle was 1999. So a good five years, six years has elapsed. And uh, nobody wants to go. (laughs) Well, they have sold 60,000 tickets, Terry. Yes. And granted, there are more seats available in this stadium that were available in the Kingdome the last time they played a home football playoff game, Terry. Mm -hmm. But that still is not the issue. The issue is that there are 5,000 tickets remaining, 5,000 away from a sellout, and if it's not sold out by 1.30... There will be no broadcasting of the game, television-wise, in this city. That is surprising. But we have free tickets. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're flooded with free tickets because (laughs) apparently there are a lot to go around here. Sure. And I cannot, again, begin to believe that they could sell out all the regular season games and now they're in the playoffs and they can't sell out the game. (laughs) Well, I'm going to be there. I'm into it. Hotshot's going to be there throwing up his guts. Yeah. (laughs) I'll eat a big hot dog right in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Asking for more salmonella. I can't wait. And they're playing the Rams? Are you kidding me? They're their biggest rival right now, if you will, Terry. Mm-hmm. A team that uh, deserves payback after earlier this season. The Seahawks were laughing their way off the field with a 17-point lead the last time they played them here in Seattle, yeah. only to watch them before Seattle knew it hit them, blindside them with a... 24-point comeback in the final few minutes of regulation and overtime. Yeah. It'll be nice to be there when the Seahawks pay them back on Saturday in front of a national television audience minus one city. (laughs) I think everyone should be there. Mm. But that's just me. I'll go alone. (laughs) I can handle it. (laughs) What else is going on, Terry? The number of teen breast implants, well, increased 292% in the last year. 292%? Yes. Man. And this is according to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. Oh, wow. So it's not just some uh, little uh, 23-year-old who just came up with this statement and just threw it out there. Right. <laughs> You're making it seem like it's pretty official. Wow. To, oh, just, well, Terry's even impressed that she's Two, made it No, official. I'm just oh. looking at the number, 292%. Yeah, I, I'm always amazed when things uh, get over 100%. doesn't seem to make much sense to me. <laughs> I know. How do you get over 100%? I thought 100 was it. That, that should be the cutoff, right? Yeah, I never saw 120% <laughs> on a test. Okay. I mean, people use the expression, I gave 120%, but we know they don't mean it. Right. But uh, you're telling us that uh, officially the statistic is 292% increase in the number of teen breasts that have been augmented, yes. augmented, mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. Sometimes, in some scenarios, both. Yep. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Well, Terry, I told you a better day was coming. <laughs> And now it is here. Well, see, I don't, I, I don't think that's good, though. Big boom teams! Well, yeah! you might love it, but, uh, you know. Wait. I'm sorry, did I say all that out loud? Y- yeah. Oh, I did. Very loud. All right. Uh, well, Terry, uh, it's a sign of the times. It's the way it is. It's, uh, it's a better day. It's a new world. Embrace it as opposed to trying to correct it, okay? If you find some flaw with it, okay? Uh-huh. Nice 16-year-old girls realize to keep up with the Joneses, they need a nice, healthy D-cup. But the body is not finished developing, and and you have so much more to go through. There you go. So even after your operation, you have so much to look forward to. <laughs> well, yeah, your boobs will even get bigger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They'll get bigger, and so will your, your hips, your thighs, and all that other fun stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Terry, uh... 292%. Is that the number? Spe- yes. Speaks for itself. I know. Now, that's, of course, a percentage, meaning that we don't know what the actual hard number was. Oh, she said hard. <laughs> we, it could have been like seven girls got it uh, two years ago, and some 292% more got it last year. I don't think it was that low. No. But it doesn't mean like this still, even though you hear a glaring statistic like 292%, it doesn't mean like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of teenage girls are getting breast augmentation, Terry. So there's still room for improvement, is what I'm saying. (laughs) They could do better, huh? Mm -hmm. There's still 
some room for advancement. Okay. I don't want to get complacent here <laughs> because you teenage girls have heard that 292% have uh, gotten breast augmentation. You think, okay, we've done our jobs. No, there's still more work to be done. You got a major problem with this story as a mother yeah, of... Yeah, uh, I do, actually. You're a mother of girls that are about to hit, or if uh, they haven't hit it already, they're about to hit their teenage years. Mm -hmm. Yep. Soon, How old are your daughters? Soon to be 10, 9, and 10. Well, maybe you should get the ball rolling early for them, Terry. No, no, no. Instead of fighting, you should uh, obviously realize this is the way it is today, Terry. 292% speaks for itself, and maybe you should get them ahead of the game. No, I think... Nah. I, I don't even think if they came to me at, say, 17, 18 and said, look, you know, I, I'm not developing as fast as Susie over there. And oh, geez. I get teased. Where, where's Susie, Terry? Susie over oh, there. Oh, wait, where are you pointing? Over there. Over there? Yeah. Just, yeah. I'm not oh. seeing D-cups. Where, Terry? Really See, hot. Susie right over oh, there. Oh, Jay, there she is. Yeah. And she's way hotter than Alexia and Jay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not going to say. Yes, I, I would, I would uh, think that uh, the rational way of figuring this out is that if you don't let your son get his own haircuts, you're not letting your teenage right. daughters get breast right. augmentation, Terry. Absolutely not. Absolutely not is mm -hmm. your answer. Mm -hmm. I think you may have to give in to the pressure. No. And just understand that it's a different world than when you were a teenager and last I heard you weren't the most ideal teenager that ever hit the earth, Terry. Still, it's, it's a no-go. Mm-hmm. Again, Terry's kids suffering because she has to overcompensate for the failures that she had as a teenager. Sucks to be them. Uh huh. They did nothing wrong. Yeah. They weren't there. If they were, maybe they would have stopped Terry from getting into so many back seats. Oh. <laughs> wow. But they weren't there. So what do they get? They get punished for something that has nothing to do with them. Hmm. And when all these girls are going to be running around the high school hallways with their big implants. Stephen Kilbreth not here. Big implants. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Terry Freeze, kids, will be suffering for her teenage years. They'll be fine. Uh -huh. They will. Are you sure, Terry? Yeah. Pretty confident. Are you sure? Them. Or are they going to be just so maladjusted that oh, you won't even be able to identify it? I don't think not getting breast augmentation is going to make them so dysfunctional. Are you sure, Terry? No. Or are they going to be so dysfunctional they're going to make John John look like a model citizen? Oh, never that. Okay. <laughs> well, then I'm okay with it then. <laughs> I'm still saluting and uh, applauding this, this statistic you brought to my attention that over the past 12 months, the number of but, I mean, teenage breast augmentation is a little bit of a of a peculiar thing. I mean, what do we, teenage is a nice, broad little area of, uh, of a range. I mean, are we talking about 14-year-old girls getting, if you're talking about 19, good. 19-year-old girls should be getting breast augmentation if they're flat-chested. But 14? That's what they're saying, 18-year-old and younger. 18 and younger. 18 and younger. Why do you say 18 and younger? A teenage covers 13 to 13, 19. Well, yeah. So why Younger you say, than 18. Well, you're saying teenage. Teenage is 13 to 19. So what is it? I, well, I, I'm saying from the... I read that from the, from the article. 18-year-olds and younger, it says. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In 2002, 3,000... 872 teenage girls. How do they have these exact numbers? I'm not sure. It says in 2002, 3,872 uh, 3, girls got breast augmentation. Uh, in 2003, those teenage numbers shot up to 11,326. There's some creepy old guy sitting there with an abacus. Hey, one more. <laughs> hey. And it does say this is statistics for girls 18 years old and younger. Wow. Maybe they have these hard, uh, precise numbers because when you're 18, you need to get parental consent and right. you can't just run to the uh, backyard and the trunk of someone's car and get it done. <laughs> right. Or Mexico. Well, mm -hmm. and plus your implant has a little serial number on it and they right. record it. So they the can scan number. it when you go leave the grocery store. I understand, Terry. <laughs> well. Mm -hmm. And they warn critics and uh, medical professionals are warning that 
parents who are allowing their teenage girls to get breast augmentation are doing a really bad thing for their young, developing girls. Look at Terry for the applaud. Uh-huh. Wow. This is a fascinating story. Mm. Yes. 16-year-old girls with brand-new love mounds walking into their, <laughs> into their high schools. It's pretty cool if you're dating her at the time. Could you imagine? Man, we're not that far removed from high school, are we? Could you imagine? Like Jesse O'Kane, all of a sudden, I'm just trying to picture a girl that I was kind of into in high school. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, she walks into school one day after like a Christmas vacation would be a, a time when I'm sure a lot of girls who are getting breast augmentation would do it. Or during the summer, they come back the next year and they have huge jugs. That'd be great. <laughs> And you're a college girl. How old are you? I'm 21. And what are your reactions when I tell you that uh, the percentage of 18 and uh, youngers getting 18 year old girls and younger getting breast augmentation is up 292 percent from last year? Well, I heard um, my mom told me not too long ago that it's like the new fad thing for people to get for their graduating kids. So when they go to college, they look hot. <laughs> Uh -huh. So that may be why the numbers are so high, because most girls graduating high school are 18. They would fall in this range. Maybe. And if know. you are graduating high school and you've gotten your diploma successfully, you're entitled. You deserve your implants. <laughs> I guess. I never had that problem. <laughs> Terry, are you going to feel the pressure when your daughter successfully graduated from high school to get them what all the other moms are getting their daughters? No, I will not. What are you going to get your daughters for high school graduation? Who knows? I don't know, but it's not a pair of breasts. Well, how about one? No. How about we start there? <laughs> Put it right in the middle. Put it right in the middle. <laughs> yes. Call it a day. They'll be fine with whatever mm -hmm. they receive. What is your name, Lauren? Yeah. You have breast implants? No. I don't need them. <laughs> Why not? Uh, I've got double D's on my own. Really? Yeah. Well, that should keep you warm. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so why won't you pay? Because uh, I'm poor and cheap. Uh -huh. Where do you go to college? The U. The U. Oh, oh, the U. What, what, where do you go? I'm sorry? Where do you go to college? The University of Washington. Oh, I've heard of it, yes. And uh, you're doing well there? What are, you, what are you majoring in? Well, I'm trying to get into the graphic design program. Uh-huh. You got a boyfriend? Yeah. How's that working out? Good. What do you do with him? Live together and not see each other ever because he works nights. So that keeps the relationship fresh, huh? <laughs> mm hmm And uh, how often do you and him have uh, lovemaking time? Not nearly enough. Mm hmm So how often would you say you've done it in the past month? Uh, a dozen times. Wow. Well, then you do make some time. <laughs> yeah, but not enough. Sounds like a lot to me lately. <laughs> yeah, especially for you, right? <laughs> uh, and was that gratifying for you? Huh? Did you enjoy those sessions that you had with your college boyfriend? Yeah, very much so. Do you live on campus? No. You live off campus in an yes. apartment near? Uh, I, live, I live in a townhouse. In a townhouse with your boyfriend? Yes. And you pay rent 50-50? Uh, we bought the townhouse. You bought a townhouse together. You said you're how old? 21. 21. And you're buying townhouses with a boyfriend of 21? Yeah, that's why I'm poor now. Mm-hmm. That if you go to the game, who are you going to take? Him. You going to have sex at the game? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if it's cold enough? <laughs> Got to keep warm. I, I highly doubt it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, if you can buy a townhouse, you can surely buy tickets, right? Well, that's why I'm poor now. <laughs> Spend all our money on the townhouse. Exactly. What would you do for New Year's? Um, we went over to the other side of the mountains and played in the snow and got drunk around a campfire and sat out in the snow all day. Mm. <laughs> with her double Ds, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> you got to end every sentence she says with her double Ds. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Who's going to win this weekend? Hopefully the Seahawks. I'm, I have faith in them. I've been watching them all year. Name two players on the team. Marcus Trufant and... Uh, Sean Alexander. Marcus Dupont's right. my man. Oh, is that right? Oh, wow. Number 23, cornerback. Love him. Yes, and if he wanted after the game, if he picked you out uh, from the stands and asked you to come in the locker room and wanted to have sex with you, would you do it or not? No, he's not on my list. Who's on your list? <laughs> he's not. Oh, you know, Mrs. the, the Meyer. list of, like, 
it's the list of like five people that you're allowed yeah, to Yeah, whatever. I've heard about it. It's boring now. What, <laughs> but uh, I understand the list, but who's on your list? Oh, Johnny Depp, Brad Pitt. <laughs> it changes all the time. Well, they'll, they'll all be at the game. What if they pick you out of the stands <laughs> and want to take you in the locker room? You'd have sex with them? Yeah. But not Marcus Truffaut. But, but, he's, your, but he's your man. Yeah, I was going to say. Oh, hmm? but you don't have sex with black men. <laughs> She no, loves it. not that at all. Well, we can have prejudiced people at the game, but thanks for calling. <laughs> Why isn't he on your list? I don't know. He's just not. You only get so many people on your list. You got. But you also said like it changes all the time. Well, yeah, but it. it so it, really, he's not your man, and you don't love him. Hmm. What do you look like? Are you hot? Uh, I would That's say enough. decent. What do you weigh? Well, I'm on my way to school, and it's freezing outside. I'm wearing jeans and a sweatshirt. What do you weigh? Oh, what do I weigh? Like Don't 100... repeat the questions. I'm begging you. <laughs> okay, sorry. Like 150 pounds. That's translated to at least 180, Terry. Okay. Yeah. It's winter. She's wearing big clothing. <laughs> 150, oh. huh? Yeah. All right. Hang on. You get Seahawk tickets. Yeah. All right? Hey. Yeah. So you can see your man. Oh, yeah. Okay? Alrighty, thank you. Hang on, Lauren. Jeez. <laughs> 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 Feel sorry for the guy who has to share a townhouse with her, Terry. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> or maybe not. I can't figure it out with her. I'd share it for a night. She's got some redeeming qualities, Terry. She sounded nice. Double Ds. Mm -hmm. Willing to spend her last buck to live with a guy so he can do it on a semi regular basis. These are nice qualities. So drive all the way to the other side of the mountains to sit in the snow. That's right. <laughs> wow. Won't go to the Seahawks game. Okay. Be face down in the snow so her boyfriend can have sex with her. These are these are decent things. Oh. Willing to freeze for free. That comes in handy from time to time. You're listening to the T Man Show on Seattle's number one hit music station, Cube ninety three. <laughs> That's people with the orange ball from the other night, Terry. Yeah, pretty ugly. Yes. And uh, so was she. Ashley Simpson got booed off the stage. She got booed roundly, if you will, Terry, uh, at the performance during halftime of the game between USC, if you could call it that, and Oklahoma. Mm. Oklahoma was an undefeated team that got their asses blown out yeah. by your Pac-10 University of Southern Cal, but that wasn't the story people were talking about when the game ended a couple of nights ago and all day yesterday, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Pinello was there, and they were just saying Lou. You, you don't. You don't even hear, like, wrestlers who taunt the crowd get booed that bit. I know. All right? Yeah. And she got booed. It was not a day. You couldn't hear even some people underneath the the big boo sound. You can't hear anyone cheering at all. Yeah. People just begging her, please, start lip syncing. Do us a favor. <laughs> This is torturous. <laughs> 72,000 people in the Miami crowd, and it's fair to say that a good number of them booed Simpson right off the stage. A good number of them? How about all of them? <laughs> I know. Well, there was one guy in the bathroom. <laughs> right. He was booing, too. <laughs> to say that a good number of them booed Simpson right off the stage. This debacle comes after a few months of Simpson damage control when the 20-year-old got busted on Saturday Night Live lip-syncing and badly. Right. The good news for Ashley? Orange Bowl ratings were the second worst since 1999. Phew. <laughs> second lowest in five or six years. Hmm. Well, that would still put it in third or fourth place. But, uh, yes... Not the best time of her life. And it's been a short life so far. So uh, that's uh, boating well for the rest of it. What else is going on, Terry? What else do you have there, please? I have a sad story out of Everett this morning. A mother got seven years for videotaping her kids having sex. Oh, she directed and videotaped her two children and an older teenager having sex at her home. We have a portion of that videotape. Do you want to hear it now, Terry? Sure. Yeah. 
here from the gallery that she set up uh, in her home there of uh, viewers that are watching the videotape in progress. They were not very happy with the performance there. Yeah. Mm. Jeez. She got seven years for that? Yes, she did. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did she do exactly now? She made her kids have sex on videotape. Well, it was her son, her 13-year-old son. Doesn't her... bring the family closer together? <laughs> no, no, no. Her and her 15-year-old daughter and then a 17-year-old friend of her daughter. And, and they... this is frowned upon by the authorities, Terry? You think? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so let me see if I got it straight. It was her 15-year-old daughter. Mm-hmm. Her how old son? 13. 13-year-old son. Yes. All right, 13-year-old son, 15-year-old daughter, and who? The gardener? No, a friend, a 17-year-old female friend of the daughter. The paper boy? <laughs> 17 year old female friend. Of female the daughter. friend. Yes. So it's two ladies who are young, young ladies, 15 and 17. Yes. One was not a related person to the brother and sister. Right. But there was in this three pronged sex event, all caught on videotape as being directed and shot. The best boy, the key grip, was all one person. That was the mom. Mm hmm. She videotaped her 15-year-old daughter and her 13-year-old son and a 17-year-old outsider who was a, a woman having sexual intercourse is what you're telling me. That is what I'm telling you, yes. And now, and this happened in, in where? It happened right in here. Everett, yes. In Everett, Everett Washington. Washington. Yes. How come I didn't hear she got sentenced to seven years? She did. How come I didn't hear? I don't remember hearing. Maybe we hear so many stories that they all blend together, and I can't remember them specifically. But I don't remember hearing this one when it broke. Ah, brother and sister having sex. <laughs> Big deal. It didn't make the, the <laughs> cut as far as the show's concerned? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember it either. With all the stuff going on in the show, it didn't make the cut. Mm -mm. You're telling me that the sentence was handed down, which makes me obviously understand that this is a story that should have broke a good at least couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. So why don't we talk about it then? Let me see that story. Let me see if you're making this. Uh... Oh. No, it's right here. Yeah. She videotaped her two children and an older teenager having sex at her home yeah. in Everett, Washington. Did you say that, Terry? Yes, I did. Yeah. She was sentenced to seven years and three months mm. in prison. Michelle Lynn Hauser, a 34-year-old mom from Bothell. Is this what happens when a 34-year-old mom has a 15-year-old daughter or what? Could be, I guess. Is this the result of a 34-year-old mom having a 15-year-old daughter? Which, do the math, means that she had this daughter at, uh... Nineteen. At nineteen? That's not that young. Anyway. I think seven years is a bit much, though. Mm -hmm. Is videotaping? I know. Enforce them. God. She, uh, is... Faced, well, she was facing the charge of second-degree child molestation and two counts of sexual exploitation of minors. Mm hmm. You put it that way, it sounds pretty severe. Yeah. <laughs> Fine exploitation, please. She pleaded guilty, by the way, uh -huh. and uh, her boyfriend was also part of this equation. This 34-year-old mom had a 34-year-old boyfriend who resides in Bothell who is going to face trial next month on other charges involved in this case. David Ernest Hill. When you have three names, it's trouble. <laughs> David Ernest Hill, 34 years of age, a Bothell, and will be going to trial on similar charges next month. Mm -mm. There's always a boyfriend involved, isn't there, Terry? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, they're not my real kids. I don't care about them. Come here. <laughs> Never doubted it for a second, huh, that there was a boyfriend somewhere involved here? But the mom was quoted as saying, I just... No, that I would never do anything like this again to my children. <laughs> well, Terry, at least she learned a lesson. Yes, thank you. Yes, goodness. her children have been uh, forever harmed by this. They will never recover, but she learned a lesson, Terry. Doesn't that make it all worth it? Come on. Whatever. You heard the woman's statement in court. She'll never do it again. Right. Whoops. Oh, Maybe because by the time she gets out of prison, her kids will be too old to get the titillation from it. <laughs> Could be. Wow. It's unbelievable. The deputy prosecutor, Janice Albert, said that one of the girls was so drunk that she has no recollection of what happened. Oh, my God. Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh... 
It doesn't say how to get a copy of this. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I Iceberg. thought it might say it somewhere in the story, too. Uh, I, uh, let's hope not. I always knew weird stuff went on in Everett. <laughs> now it's confirmed. <laughs> okay. You and the Getty wish to have a copy of this in their hands. Is that no, right, Terry? No, no, no. Well, uh, it and... the prosecutor, Janice Albert, would agree with you. She says this is a brutal act. This is one of the most disturbing cases she's ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. And that's coming a lot since she's the prosecutor in Everett. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Safe to say, she's seen her share of disturbing cases, and she ranks this amongst the top of disturbing cases she's ever been a part of, Terry. A 34-year-old mom who videotaped her 15-year-old daughter and her 13-year-old son and a 17-year-old outsider having sexual intercourse. Huh? Well, that was a boring afternoon, Terry. <laughs> Bored, huh? What are you going to do, play payday? <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Jeez. Monopoly only has so many thrills, Terry. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was probably all the pressure from the boyfriend, too, right? Wow. All right. Jeez. Let's go to the phones and see people's reaction to this. Can I get Seahawk tickets? All right. Sorry. You're on the air. Hello? Yes. Hey, T-Man. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, that sucked about that story, but I need Seahawk tickets, yeah, Right. <laughs> well, I would like a comment or two, sir. I know you've been holding a long time for Seahawk tickets, but we we are discussing now a very uh, fascinating situation, and I don't say that in a good way. I, I'm saying it in the most horrifying of fashions, and I would like a very lucid and uh, uh, profound comment from from yourself to capture it all in one sentence, please. Go ahead. Nasty? Thanks for the call. <laughs> Thanks for participating. <laughs> You're on the air. Hello. Yes, good morning. I have a comment, if you'd like. All right. Um, I think that the story was almost okay to understand it until you realize that there's alcohol involved. That makes a difference. So the alcohol being a part of a minor's uh, recreational situations is too much for you, but the sex on tape was, eh, I can handle that. Right. Between, between the brother and the sister, yeah, that's all right. Well, who you knows the contact between the brother and the sister may have been contact between the brother because and the Because there was that third party, it gives you an escape clause in thinking that the brother and sister may not have ever touched each other in a sexual way. They may have been totally focused on this 17-year-old outside female, Terry. So that well, gives you no a... charges of incest, so obviously the brother and sister didn't touch each other. So that makes it... Because you're able to rationalize that the brother and sister never touched each other, you're cool with this. I'm not cool with it, but, you know... I hear you. Not hey, as bad. hey, hey I'm, not, I'm not condemning you. I'm just trying to understand you. Are you cool with it or not? I'm not cool with it, but the situation is worsened by the fact that there's alcohol. That's just my comment. Mm -hmm. So the, the greater charge, as far as you're concerned, is not this sexploitation situation. It's alcohol being consumed in large proportions by minors. At the, uh, at the Especially when it's under the guidance of... Uh, a woman, 34, who should know better. Her own, right. her own mother. If the kids had not been drunk, it may not have happened. I think alcohol may have had a large part to play. So you think the kids, got, the kids got drunk and said, Hey, Ma, take out the videotape. We're about to do something really crazy. And well, it was the kids' mom, idea. Maybe mom and boyfriend got the kids drunk and said, Hey, we have an idea. Yeah, but the, 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 if the mom is of the mindset to tape her 13-year-old and 15-year-old having sex, would she have to get them drunk to get them to do it? I don't know. I was just trying to. I was just trying to work my way in for some Seahawks tickets. I really have nothing else. Yeah, that. I didn't think far, far you, enough. You came up. You came up a little short. But thanks for the call. <laughs> nice effort. All right. I like the honesty, though. <laughs> yeah. Hey. It's like going, God, I didn't think he was going to have I'm to trying to discuss the particulars of a situation that's happened in our very own backyard, Terry. Mm -mm -mm. Feet away from all of us. Yeah. Just mere feet away from all of us. Not too long ago, there was a 34-year-old mom videotaping her son and her daughter and a very hot 17-year-old <laughs> outsider, Terry. The hottest in the neighborhood, I hear. The hottest in the neighborhood, Terry. Wow, she must have been hot. With the plaid skirt. <laughs> wow, a plaid skirt? Having sexual intercourse, Terry. Mm. And I want to know people's reactions to this. And I want to know it now. You're on the air. Hello? Yes. Yeah, that's the mother of the year right there. Oh, jeez. Now, why would you say that, sir? Why would you call her mother of the year? Are you just trying to be funny? Obviously, you don't really feel that way. 
I mean, of course not. That's ridiculous. And the lady thought that she needed alcohol. That's what made it worse. Yeah, that's the most outrageous part of it is that they uh, took a couple of sips of wine. Right. Oh, yeah, that's going to do it. That's going to do it right that little, there. That little vodka is a part of the afternoon. That's uh, the how about most. The fa- how about the fact that the mom pulled out the video camera? Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. And you think you pull out a video camera and you could just merely erase what you've taped? It never happens, Terry. <laughs> no. Ask You're Paris right. Hilton that. You're right. It never does. People think, oh, we'll just keep it to ourselves. Mm-hmm. This is a tape. could be circulating for the rest of these young teenagers' lives, Terry. They'll never be able to get away from it. People looking at them weirdly 15 years from now in a coffee shop. I know you. I just watched you on tape yesterday afternoon 16 times. Wow. Brother Humper. <laughs> mm-hmm. Brother Humper. <laughs> You're on the air. You're on the air. Hello. Team man Yes, sir. Man, I, I think this is ridiculous. Uh, alcohol, no alcohol. The, the children should be protected by their mothers, 13 and 15. Their mothers should be trying to, if anything, keep them from thinking sexual thoughts until a later age when they can decide upon things uh, themselves r- rationally. Not with uh, alcohol and some boyfriend involved with a 17-year-old girl with 13-year-old son, 15, seeing each other naked, sister. Sir, where are your hands right now? (laughs) On my steering wheel. Okay. If that's what you you want to call it, that's fine, sir. You're on the air. Hello? Yeah. T to the man. Yes. How was your Christmas? It was all right. It was all right. That's it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, you still looking for comments on that story from Everett? I uh, sure. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that all those, child, those, those children are going to be in torment sexually their whole life. Mm-hmm. They'll, never be, life. they'll never be able to adjust to a... A typical or normal sexual life for their entire lives is what you're saying. Maybe not their entire lives, but most of their adulthood. Mm-hmm. Will they have to go through uh, mounds and mounds of therapy to get themselves stabilized mentally? Is what you're, is that what you're saying, sir? No, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe they could just go through a lot of uh, tribulations throughout their sexual life, oh. and then maybe have to learn learn from their own mistakes. Okay. Well, thank you for the call. You're on the air. Somebody hang that lady. Okay. That's what they need to do. Hang her. So if what? there was a public hanging in the Everett Town Square, is there an Everett Town Square? <laughs> I'm sure there is. Yeah, I think yeah. Cher is playing there this weekend. Uh, if, if there was going to be a public hanging of this mom, you would be first row on the aisle. I would be wanting to pull the guillotine. Oh, jeez. That is crazy. You never would put, never would you ever put your kids out like that, man. Uh-huh. Well, what, what if she were to? What if she would argue these were mature kids for their age, and that no. they they were talking and uh, and all the other kids their age are having sex? So why shouldn't they do it under the supervision of their own mom and her boyfriend? And uh, yes, as the previous caller pointed out, yes, it may sound incestuous, but these. These two, brother and sister, never touched each other. They're, they were just all over the seventeen-year-old. Never. It's getting pretty hot now, <laughs> isn't it, sir? No. Ask, just ask Terry. She, she'll no. tell you. No. Well, Terry doesn't let her son get his own haircuts. Doesn't let him use the phone. So I don't know if Terry's the person to ask about this. <laughs> well, it's not like, you know, um, I would allow my son and daughter to... Oh, that... Is seven years too much, Terry? No. Well, this guy wants to hang her, so I shouldn't... Yeah. Seven years doesn't seem like too much. No. Even when she says... I just know I would never do anything like this again to my children or to anyone's children. That's what Miss Michelle Lynn Hauser was quoted as saying in the courtroom when she was sentenced, Terry. Not too much. She got off easy? Yeah. I just don't think it's too much, that's for sure. Hmm. You're on the air. Hey, how's it going this morning? All right. Well... I just want to say, you know, this lady is a prime example of why people need to start having to take tests to have kids, and I think she should be sterilized myself. 
Yeah, it doesn't say anything in the story of what the role of the boyfriend, the 34-year-old boyfriend was, but can it be anything that is just not completely sleazy and disgusting? Right. Yeah, he wasn't there going action. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, mean, he was I know. Involved a little more than yeah, that. Yeah, sure. I think he was probably positioning people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right and never, Terry. I know. Say what? I said right and never, sir. Oh. Yeah. So can I get some Seahawks tickets now? No, but thanks for the call. Oh, thank you. Call back when I'm giving them away. I'll be giving them away. Uh, let's give away a pair of tickets, like mm, right now. Call back, sir. Okay. Woohoo. Okay. <laughs> First caller right now gets to go to the Seahawk game on Saturday afternoon. Woohoo! Nice. You're on the air. Uh, hi, I have a comment about this woman. Oh. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm waiting. Well, um, I think that her sentence isn't long enough because if Mary Kay Letourneau stayed in, what, jail for how long? Then seven years. Was, she stayed triple. seven years, and she had sex with a 12-year-old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this lady so why, video recorded three kids, and so shouldn't it be tripled? It should be tripled because there were three kids involved. Yeah, so, and they were her own children, so she's totally exploiting them, so they're going to be totally screwed up their whole life. But if you screw up your own kids, isn't it better than screwing up someone else's oh, kid? Oh, God. That's your right as a parent, I think, to screw up your kids. I think it's even worse. I think it's even worse. She, doesn't, she didn't protect them at all. And right. then, I mean, obviously they had issues before if they would even, I mean, be in that situation to be getting drunk with their parents, so... So uh, any child who is going to get drunk with their parents has issues themselves. You don't think they have uh, no choice in the matter? Or is it the... Well, I think, I think what they're thinking is that, oh, well, I have a cool mom, you know. Uh, she's going to buy me alcohol and stuff, but... But know, you do believe there are 13-year-olds that can say to themselves when uh, presented alcohol by their parents, no, mom, I'm not doing this, you're a loser, I'm not going to be. Well, maybe it's because they're from Marysville and Everett, and I don't oh, want to geez. call it out, but it's kind of, you know, hillbilly. Okay, so. I was waiting for the first attack on the area, Terry. Now Marysville's been dragged into this. I know. What did, what did Marysville do uh -huh. here, Terry? Just sitting out there. Just provide us with a great casino is all they do. <laughs> okay. would, you, would you like Seahawk tickets or not? Yes, I would. That would be nice. You're not going to the game. Please, I have a new boyfriend, and I'd like to... Oh, oh my God. Who wants to impact? And in order to keep him around, you got to go to the... Seahawk game an, with tickets an, that you're going to provide nice for him. Payment. It would be a nice payment. Well, he how'd you find sense. this new? How how new is he? How new is new? It's um well, it's kind of weird because it was my a friend of a friend. Well, it's always and, weird, but how new is it? Well, it's I a friend it's of a like friend. A week. A week. Like a week and wow. A half. And is it good sex or not? Um, I haven't had sex with him yet. Liar! Oh, but I bet if she I gets the Seahawk girl. tickets, then hey, it's sex like you, crazy. You're a good girl. Yes, I am. What does that mean? That um. I I'm not I don't have sex right away. All right. Well, how long does he have to wait? I have to make sure that he's see, not uh, two more days, T man. <laughs> Terry, don't uh, hate because you can't uh, understand this type of mindset. But isn't it funny that the girl who's not willing to give her boyfriend sex has to give him Seahawk tickets to keep him around? All right. Well, see, that's what I was kind of thinking. You know. Well, how long do you make a typical guy wait? This is a a friend yeah. of a friend, and uh, everything's going good because he's a great new boyfriend. But how long are you going to make him wait? Well, I've only been with one other person before, and we just broke right. up. Right? Who hasn't? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, I don't know. I want to jump right into it right away. Well, you you say you don't know, but you do know. You have an exact target date for when you're willing to give him sex. What is it? Share it with everyone. Go ahead. No one's I going to be judgmental. Just say the date, throw it out there, get it over with, and we'll move on. I don't know. I'll say a month. <laughs> you're going to make him wait a month. A month. So now uh, today is what? January 6th? And you're going to make him wait. You're going to make him go as far as February 6th, and then you're going to have sexual intercourse with this man. Maybe, you yeah. little whore. <laughs> <laughs> Making her sound all good, girl, Terry. And she is going to be allowing him to slam her in every orifice he chooses just a mere month away, Terry. Yeah. They're going to videotape it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with a random 17-year-old girl involved in the situation. I have to be careful. Why do you have to be careful? Because, well, it's since it's a friend of a friend, she already told me. She was like, well, if you should get together. I don't want that to happen because I don't want to have to choose friends if you break up. Mm -hmm. so I have to be very, you know, very careful. Now, you say a month, and obviously that means you're not going to make them wait more than two weeks. 
but I, I And the will. chances are, there's a very strong chance you'll probably have sex with him this weekend. <laughs> He'll be so excited that you got him Seahawk tickets. so get all worked up after the game, especially if they win. <laughs> you'll get a little horny. You'll break down easily. And you'll have your legs in the air by about mm, 8 p.m. on Saturday night. No. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 22. Mm-hmm. And you've only been with one man sexually. I've- yeah, I've actually been down to the studio before. Oh, and <laughs> So which one of us was it? Yeah. <laughs> and was I good? <laughs> no. When were you down in the studio? Uh, it was uh, about a year ago. For um, what? My boyfriend was um, the pothead, and, you know, I watched him with their little um, porn video. Huh? You probably don't remember. It was no. a year ago. I think. <laughs> yeah, I feel stupid. Oh, you were down? We we invited you down here? Yes. All right. And you want to go to the game? Yes, please. And it's important to your new relationship that you go to the game? Yes, he loves football. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm I can care less, but, you know, well, I'm gonna he give loves you... football, so it'll be fun. I'm going to give you tickets. Woo! All right. Thank you. All right, you call us back when you've had sex. <laughs> we'll, we'll have the lines open for you tomorrow. Hang on a <laughs> I'm a good girl. Right. No, 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 t I'm a good girl. <laughs> I'm going to make him wait a month. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I don't want to hear that from you, Terry. It sounds uh, very transparent when you throw out a, yeah. Let me do the talking here. There are some good girls out there. I'm not sure this was one of them. We don't need any comments from you. As you now sit there with your eyes closed, being scolded. Break out the video camera. It's time. Uh-huh. You're in trouble. Do you hate good girls? Is that what it comes down to, Terry? Do you have a like a a bad kind of feeling towards girls out there who are actually good and hold themselves pure and keep themselves? cleaner than the average Maybe girl these days? Maybe a little days? bit. Who knows? Oh, you resent those girls Maybe because you, so. you can never That's find right. a way to be one of us. That That's what it is? right. Mm-hmm. Deep-rooted longing to be one. Right. Because that's what all your peanut gallery little comments sound like, Terry. I know. A bitter resentment towards those girls that actually do exist somewhere out there, Terry. Not in Everett, not in Marysville, oh, but wow. somewhere out there. Somewhere out there, beneath the pale blue sky. <laughs> I've all, I've all. Oh, my God. He's man. He's the T-Man. On Seattle's number one hit music station, Cube 93. American doctors tonight are disputing a new study out suggesting soda could cause cancer. In it fact, is. they say the culprit could just as easily be pizza. Doctors mm. in India say drinking soda... Oh, no, this just in. It's quiche, Terry. <laughs> now, which is it? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I think it's breathing air. Cause cancer. In fact, they say the culprit could just as easily be pizza. Doctors in India say drinking soda may lead to an increase in cancer of the esophagus. Right. These digestive doctors say there's been a 450% hike in the cancer since 1974. Wow. But some American doctors say people also ate more pizza during those years. So there's just no telling that carbonated drinks are to blame. Okay. Well, then, thanks for the story. What? Yes. Soda right. does sound kind of good right now, though. <laughs> I'll take one. <laughs> and a Danish. Okay, but Danish causes cancer. Right. <laughs> what else is going on in this world, Terry? What else do you have over there, please? Well, since we were, we were talking about moms behaving badly, I have a few oh, more geez. stories there for you. What is the like. coming out? <laughs> I don't know. Moms Never. behaving badly. Yes. yes. Okay, what about moms behaving badly, Terry? What, what do you have? I got a story here about a 21-year-old mother who was arrested Ooh. after leaving her toddler's home <laughs> alone while she went out to party. Oh, come on. You know how many times that happens in this world, Terry? Oh, I know. You know how many, not many of them get caught, but you know how many moms leave their kids at home unable to really fend for themselves because they're at uh, ages that you are not capable of taking care of yourself, right. and yet they're out at the club, Terry. Mm-hmm. At the club. Mm-hmm. Yep. The girls were ages one and two. Oh, well, then they were old enough to take care of themselves. I <laughs> yeah, stand corrected. Right. I was thinking of like six months when you're completely unable of taking care of yourself, Terry. Mm-hmm. Happens all the time, Terry. These moms who are looking to, uh, well, in their minds, have 
an ability to be a quality mom while trying to find someone in their life at the same time. You can't do both, so you have to tie up the kids and go out. Yeah. I'm telling you, the kids would have been better off just not being born. Oh. Well. Or actually being put up for adoption. Better yet. So you're saying that uh, you are happy that you were a, an adopted child over being a child that was left alone at age two. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, well it's, it is, Terry, a, a hazard. It's tough to pick up guys at the club with your two-year-old <laughs> hanging on your breast. <laughs> so it's hard to be as... As hard, well, as tough as you're being, saying that these moms should be giving up their kids for adoption. If you well, tie them up only once a week, isn't no, that all right? No, once it's not. Week. Twice a week, okay, that's getting a little crazy. But once a week, you gotta go out and have some social life. Whatever. You should have never become became a parent either. Like I said, well, sometimes these things that. aren't planned, Terry, and these moms aren't ready to hand over their kids to an adoption agency. Well, there are so, other options. What's the what's the alternative ground that you're offering then? Well, then then maybe they should have terminated the pregnancy. Oh, that's nice. Well, maybe they should have. Um, because it's that's it's nice. it's How's not it? fair to that's the nice. kid. Maybe they should have. Huh? What? It's not fair to the child. No, I'm not. I'm with e what? It's right not fair to the child. Pro choice. What? Oh, mm -hmm. geez. Uh, well, now you're throwing out a number of controversial issues here, Terry. True, but that's how I feel about it. Uh huh. <sighs> It would be cool, though, if there was a club that allowed toddlers no, with their moms with their to come parents. in. Oh, yes. <laughs> Had a little playpen off to the side. You have to, have I, you have to have ID that the kid is three years of age or younger. Oh, my gosh. Over three. Oh. Come on. Let them stay home and take care of themselves. Right. Whatever. Fully capable. Come on. You tell me that the day's not going to come where there's going to be a club that, yes, is going to be toddler or infant friendly? If that's the case, then that's very sad. And these dudes will show up, Terry, because they know they're going to be vulnerable women there that are going to be looking for, for guys in the worst way, and they're going to play the old sensitive guy kind of role of, oh, you are so admirable for taking care of your child by yourself, and I've been looking for a woman like you for a while, only hoping to take her down in the fastest way possible, Terry. Mm. So don't think that this club won't be popular amongst both sexes. The club that plays the the right songs and has the right atmosphere with a, the right dancing kind of environment and also has a little daycare area. <laughs> Drop your, off, your kid off right over here. Mm -hmm. Here's your number. Terry, I'm shocked it hasn't happened already. That's... I'm shocked. Maybe there is a club. Maybe I'm not in the know. To your knowledge, is there any club that is toddler or infant friendly? Not that I know. Well, don't you believe that the day is coming with all these single moms out there needing us? Well, isn't it an upgrade from tying your kids up and going out to the club and, and then hoping they're okay when you get home at uh, 2 in the morning? How about you just keep your behind home? Oh! How about you just, hey, you had the child, you chose to keep the child, your party life is over. So you think, you would think you would be a little bit more sensitive to the issues that uh, are pressing upon a single mom's life, considering you were one for many, I was, many and, years. and you know what? I gave up the party life. Mm -hmm. Did it for a long time. Sure. We weren't around to verify that that actually was the case. Now, we have to take your word for it when you say it, Terry, because we, we don't know you to be a liar no, or anything. Plenty so of people that can verify it for so you. So you're telling me that when you were a single mom and your kids were in the most vulnerable of states at the most uh, infant-type ages, you were the single mom that said, Can't do it! I'm taking six, eight, ten years off from the club scene. Mm -hmm. That's who you were. Yes. And you wouldn't have liked there to be a club that was toddler and infant friendly? No. We could call it tits and tots. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute, but no. Ladies night every Thursday, too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nope. All the Italian ices your kid can eat? Wow. Get them sick. Yeah. <sighs> Come on. No.
little changing table right next to the dance floor. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> Not get by Kyle in that time. Well, on. then what's the answer? How? I, I gave you way too many options there. Well, you know that it's not going to happen on a grand scale, Terry. You're going to have these 23-year-old moms who don't have a man in their life still wanting to go out whether you tell them to stay home or not. So what's the answer? I'm telling you, the answer is Friday night at Tits and Tots. We have <laughs> Dollar Wells. <laughs> nice. Wow. And you get to meet your date's baby mm -hmm. right next door. Hey, isn't that a, a better situation than having to meet him, like, after you finish the deal? <laughs> in the morning? Mommy, who's that in right. your bed? <laughs> right. I'm telling you, I just thought of it, Terry, but the more I think about it, the more I realize that we're within five years. So are you opening the first one? Maybe I will. Oh, uh, maybe geez. I'll make a fortune. <laughs> so be it. It's a dot. <laughs> Maybe I'll make a fortune, Terry, when I open up the first toddler and infant-friendly club. Hmm. Where a mom can come, bring her one-and-a-half-year-old, and not have to feel like the horrible person who left their kid bound and gagged hmm. for three hours, six hours, while they were out on a Tuesday night, of all things. No, but once we're wasted, we can take our little toddler in the car and drive home. Let me see that story, by the way. Uh, at this club that I'm going to open, Terry. Yes. There are going to be a fleet of designated drivers, Terry, because that's what the clientele would want. Oh. So the moms can get pissed drunk. Right. And they could uh, then be responsible and have the uh, the staff that I'm going to hire drive these moms home, Terry. And, and then once and they get home, what happens? Because the baby still can't take care of itself, can't get in the door, and moms do piss drunk to even... Well, that staff member who drove them home uh, lets the mom in her own house uh -huh. and then have sex with her, Terry, because yeah. she's so devastated that she didn't meet anyone that night that she's willing to have sex with anything. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I got it all covered, Terry. Yeah, sure. By the way, you didn't even mention that the the mother that you're speaking about here that was arrested, this 21-year-old, I don't know if you, you told the details of the story. Did you say I her? said she was 21. Yes, I did. Lydia Evans, age 21, of Dover, I don't know, Dover, Philadelphia, Dover, Pennsylvania. Of Dover, Pennsylvania, she left her child, by the way, locked in her room. Children. Her, her children. Yes. And locked. even one was even, like, like... Uh, restrained with yes. some kind of... Yes. Yes. Tied up or whatever to the crib. She was bound. She was with an elastic bandage tied to the crib. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, we'll let the baby just sit in the dirty diaper for a good six, seven hours. It's happening all over the place, too. I know, and it's sad. It just happens to be a situation that in Dover, Pennsylvania, this woman was caught... I said the act. diaper all night. Big deal. <laughs> Not sure I just did it last night. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go to these phone lines and see if people are ready to embrace how many men out there are going to be willing to go to my club, Tits and Tots. <laughs> tits and Tots. You're on the air. Hey, man. Yes. Hey, man, I'm hoping to get some Seahawks tickets. Well, sir, I do have three more pairs of tickets to give away before the end of this here show, but right now I'm talking about Tits and Tots, sir. Are you going to be on the line that is going to be winding around the block to get into Tits and Tots or no? Yes, I am. Okay, thanks for the call. <laughs> just if, that'll, if that'll get me tickets, Steve, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, <laughs> well, then what's the tie, Terry, of all these 23-year-old single moms that are leaving their kids home alone at age two so they can go to the club? I'm giving you a club that is kid and toddler and infant friendly, and you're laughing at it. Yes, well, well then what's your resolution? I your 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 uh, hope is that they're just going to stop. What well, do you think they should know that they shouldn't be doing this? Of course they do. Yes, and I know that. And they're doing it anyway. I know. So you so you just saying, hey, you got to stop. It's not going to cut it. What remedies are you offering? Is what I'm asking you. Nothing! And yet you laugh at tits and tots! What was that beep? What is that? Someone's phone. <laughs> I think it's the pager. We're, we're allowed into tits and tots. <laughs> <laughs> Our numbers come up, Terry. Yeah. Yes. Table's ready. Right. <laughs> Your kid's being bad. Come get them. <laughs> yeah. You're on the air. Hello? Me? Yes. 
Yes, I was just calling for tickets, but I'll comment. Uh, you know what? No, no, don't do me any favors. Let me clear these phone lines. Everyone's waiting for, for Seahawk tickets because I mentioned we're going to be giving them away before the end of the show, Terry. Right. You know, it's amazing to me how the Seahawks sold out every regular season game, and yet there are 5,000 tickets that have to be sold by NFL rules, have to be sold by 1.30 this afternoon or else the game is not going to be broadcasted, and yet everyone is holding on the line for free tickets. Mm hmm Ticketmaster has no weight right now. <laughs> yep. You're on the air. Yeah, I was going to comment about the spit sauce. Yes, what about my, my new club? <laughs> Your new club. <laughs> Me and my friend Sean Terry have always talked about opening up a club. I don't know if he'd be into the uh, Tits and Tots, the infant and toddler friendly club that I'm talking about now. Right. Go ahead. What about it? I was going to say, what about all the drunk people driving home? I just told That's you what, what I'm going to do with the drunk women. Because yes, everyone knows that women get so drunk these days that it's. It's ridiculous. I'm going to have a fleet of ugly drivers drive these women home, guys who don't ordinarily get sex, who are going to be the savior to this woman's night, driving her kid and her infant home safely, and this woman is going to be more than happy to have sex with him upon their return back to her little condo or apartment. And I'm going to pay him minimum wage. <laughs> so on top of getting sex from these single moms, Terry, yes. he's going to get a minimum wage salary. He's going to get very, very uh, big perks. Good benefits, too. Mm -hmm. Big perks. <laughs> You're on the air. You're laughing, Terry. 401k? You're laughing, and, and yes, I'm not going to open it, Terry. I am opening, uh, I am part owner of a new restaurant, by the way, since we're on the subject that's opening January 18th. Are you mm -hmm. going to go to the opening of that, Terry? I got that email there. Okay. Well, it's going to be the biggest, newest, best sports bar and restaurant in this great Northwest. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll be hearing more about this over the coming month. But uh, right now we're talking about tits and tots. Yes, you're on the air. Hello. <laughs> the other one. Yeah. Uh, you know, tits and tots could be a great idea. You know, I mean, we could get the kids started early. You know, like they could waitress and waiter. And, okay. Uh, Everyone, you know, everyone, everyone's making jokes. <laughs> everyone's making jokes, but I know that there are a lot of people out there that are seeing the value. And you're all poking fun. But when the day comes that a club that allows toddlers and infants to be brought with the single mom on a nightly basis, you watch how popular it's going to be, and you're all going to go. Women going to go because there's a lot of women out there who don't know what to do with their two-year-old when they want to go out, and men are going to go because these women, A, are desired by some men because they want a woman who's the nurturing type that these mothers are, but mostly by guys that want to screw a vulnerable woman. And it's unfortunate that that has to be the way it is, but hopefully these moms will be bright enough to weed through the guys who are just there faking like they're all sensitive to the issues of a single mom and just merely want to have sex with them and find those guys that are there to meet a quality woman. <laughs> Just the thought of quality woman, it sounds funny. Yes! <laughs> quality. Oh, jeez. You found your quality man, Terry? I did. It took you 20 years. So? Some would say that, yeah, that's a major success story. Mm -hmm. There are not, ma say. not many quality men out there, Terry. <laughs> You're on the air. Hello? Hello? Yes. How are you? I'd like to talk to Terry about the toddler situation. All right. Um, I actually know a girl. I went to school with her, and she became pregnant. Um, we weren't, you know, friends or anything, but she was pregnant. She got pregnant, worked as a bartender, and pretty much left her kid with her mother, like, all the time since the baby was born. And the father went off to college, but I just, she was very into herself, you know, and I just, I couldn't believe that she would leave her daughter, I mean, her son home like this. It, it bothered me to know that she was bartending and the, the kid wasn't getting attention. Well, the kid had a grandmother out there that at least was uh, able to take care 
of the child. Well, thank goodness. Yeah. Yes. Thank goodness for that. Out in public. No, she would be out in public and say, you know, don't call me mommy. It was like that kind of situation. It just made me sick. Oh, she'd say, don't call me mommy? Yes. Yeah, oh, would, my like, God. Don't call me mommy. It was disgusting. I was so... How many 45-year-old grandmothers out there are thrust into the position of having to take care of a... Uh, of Eddie? Plenty, I'm sure. Well, with tits and tots, it would take some of the pressure off, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's awful, though. I mean, there's no it excuse is. for it. Like Terry said, there's there's other ways of, you know, handling a pregnancy. There's... There is adoption, which I think is a wonderful idea, you know, for people who can't handle a pregnancy. Or if you didn't want to go through with it, there is always that, that one choice. You know, you have the choice. Mm-hmm. Terminate the pregnancy. Oh, You're on the air. Hello. Hey, man, I'd like to come down and schedule an appointment for an interview for a designated driver today. You want to be on... <laughs> You want to be on staff to be one of the drivers outside of the club uh, Correct, to yeah. drive some of these ladies home that haven't uh, hooked up with uh, the guy of their dreams on a particular night. That's correct. All right. Uh, I will be doing interviews <laughs> at a later date. I'll keep you in mind. Hang on the line. <laughs> it's all coming together, Terry. Oh, yeah. And you're, conti- and you're continuing to laugh, <laughs> not realizing that this is the enterprise of the future, not realizing that I'm helping a situation that has gone unnoticed and unspoken about for too long, Terry? Did you not just bring to our attention another case of a woman, 21, a mother supposed to be responsible, tying her kids up so she can go out to the club? You don't laugh at that, do you? But all I got to say is tits and tots, and you start in hysterical laughter. <laughs> it's the remedy, Terry. No. Uh-huh. And something tells me it'll be such a hot club, you'll be there, too. Oh, right. Right. He's T. He's man. He's the T-man. On Seattle's number one hit music station, Cube 93. Men's Fitness Magazine has named Seattle the fittest city in the country. Rounding out the top five, Honolulu. Well, because Men's Fitness Magazine is a gay men's magazine, Terry. Really? Yeah, you, you would think, because it has the word fitness in there, that it has something to do with, like, working out or something. Yes, yes. It's only purchased by gay men. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. And that's why they pick Seattle as... The fittest city? <laughs> city in the country. Yes. Rounding out the top five, Honolulu, Colorado Springs, San Francisco, and Denver. Right. The editor says 85% of people here get exercise every month, mm. and gyms outnumber fast food joints. Think about it. As for the fattest city, Houston, Texas. Oh, wow. Boy, oh, boy. There you go. As mm-hmm. far as body fat percentage, too, I read, I heard about this story that... Uh, we're we're one of the lowest in the country, Terry. Good to know. Of course, gay phone operator is hurting that uh, that <laughs> statistic, but not enough to uh, keep us out of the top five. Wow. There you have it. Good to know. Yes. Let me go to the phone and see what's going on here. One eight six 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 three T Man is the number to call, and you are on the air. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Are you talking to me? Yes. Okay. Um, I actually had a comment on tits and tots. Oh, jeez. <laughs> now, which one are you? Both? Okay, good. What can we do for you? Who? Who's this? Hello? Are you talking to me? Yes. Okay, my name's Dana. Hi, Dana. Hi, I had a comment on tits and tots. Are you going to start over again, Dana? We heard of, about that. Okay, yes. Um, it's called... Well, 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 let's slow down. Take a breath. Okay. Can you take a breath for me? Take a deep breath. Go ahead. Ready? It's called Chucky. Oh, jeez. Yeah, you had a great line, and you just can't wait to throw it out there, huh? <laughs> no, like, if you're desperate enough to go to a club that offers, you know, children there, then why don't you just go to Chuck E. Cheese and pick up somebody that's pulling out the hair because their children's all, you know... Oh, because, on Dana, day. on a Thursday night at 11 o'clock, after you've done yourself all up, you don't really have the... Oh, geez. Maybe you should head over to your Chuck E. Cheese little playground and help your kids out, all right? All right, whatever. Okay, thanks, Oh, wow. (laughs) Why is she mad at us now? Okay. Because we didn't laugh at a Chuck E. Cheese line. Oh, darn it. You're on the air. Hello. Oh, Chuck E. Cheese. I get it. Uh, (laughs) Yes, hi. Hello. Hello, yes. What? Hi, <laughs> T-Man. Hi, how are Hi. you? I just wanted to say that these little girls that are going out to the club, leaving their kids locked and tied up, are so screwed up. I mean, what, what kind no, of these man... These women have, like, prepared statements. <laughs> 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 one had material of the Chuck E. Cheese little line, and this one is reading off cue cards. Mm. <laughs> just like, oh. 
No, right. but, you know, they're going out. What well, are they well, going to find, like, some quality man that says, oh, it's a good idea to leave your kids locked and tied well, up? Well, I don't you think know? these women that go out to clubs after tying their kids up make it a conversation piece to tell the person that they're hanging out with that that's what they've done. All right? Well, their kids didn't ask to be born. They knew what they were doing when they had them. Yes, they did. And then no one's going to say and argue with you that this isn't very unfortunate, but it is happening in numbers that are unfathomable. Mm -hmm. Repeat it with me. Unfathomable. <laughs> I just can't believe we just tie up your kids and say, oh, I'm going out. See you later. And maybe you'll be okay when I get back. You scold right now, but you may be a couple of years away from doing it yourself. Oh, no, no, no. How old are you? I'm 27. Do you have any children? I have two. And yeah, I went through my stage where I was 21 and went to club. And I may have tied up my kids a couple of times, <laughs> but I realize now how wrong it was. It's one thing to get a babysitter and go out, but to tie up your poor little kids. Oh, just I mean, how old are your kids now? I have a six-year-old and a 13-year-old. A six and a four? 13 months. Oh, 13 months. And uh, you have no man in your life? I ha I'm married now. Oh, you're I was married before. Now. Mm -hmm. I've only been married for two years. Well, how did you meet this guy? Tell the ladies out there who may be inclined to tie up their kid tonight to try to find Mr. Right. Tell them how you so successfully found someone without tying and binding and gagging your kids. Because <laughs> I've been with him the whole time. I mean, we broke up, but, you know, if... if, if well, then what, what made him finally come around to propose and marry you? Um, it just... It was time. <laughs> no. It's time to settle down and not be like that. Is this is this up. man the father of either of the two of your kids? Both of them. Oh, both of them. Yes. All right. So he just felt it was the honorable and responsible thing to finally marry your ass. Is that pretty much it, or what? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. He doesn't love me. All right. <laughs> well, that's an interesting question. Let's ask the caller. Does this man who finally realized maybe I should mm, marry her? Is he in love with you, to your knowledge, or no? Oh, uh, I don't know. I hope so, but I really Well, shouldn't don't. you have an idea? <laughs> That'd be nice, right? It's pretty much a, <laughs> a question I think you're capable of answering in a yes or no fashion. Is he in love with you, yes or no? Oh, uh, probably not. But you're hoping someday he grows to love you? Yes. Okay. Do you love him? Yes. You're in love with him, but he's not in love with you? Well, that's how I feel. You feel like he doesn't love you, but you know you love him. Yes. Well, that's sad to have to hear. That is. And you came on condemning all these ladies who tie up their kids, and yes, no one's going to argue with you about that, but now people are hearing about your sadness, your pathetic situation where a man just married well, you out of responsibility, right, which was the I honorable thing. Yeah. my children first to know that I can't be going out and trying to find a new husband or trying to find a new baby's dad. You know, I can't be... Just dumping my kids and saying, oh, I'm just going to go out and be selfish and think of myself. But there was a period you were going out around town. Is that right? Yeah. And did you not come across the ultimate Mr. Right? Did you not come across... Th come across. This I'm guy? No, I'm not even going to talk about He was that. born in the bayou. Eating a ham sandwich. With a golden spoon. Uh, I mean, with golden teeth. I think romantic is just sitting down and what a like this. He's a guy looking for Miss do -Right. And in the meantime, f***ing everybody inside. <laughs> yeah. He's high on life. And probably something else, too. Echinacea! And now, Echinacea. the most romantic man in the land. This chilling. He's the ham sandwich guy. I tell you, he's every woman's Mr. Right. Oh, yeah. This woman says she went out to the club. She must have stumbled down to the ham sandwich man at one point or another and she wasn't able to identify that he is the consummate quintessential mr right and not only that terry yeah. but today is the ham sandwich man's 30th birthday wow really Woo good morning birthday boy i say from the capricorn to the aquarius there is no love there, there is no love that is deeper than the sea, and my love cannot be imaginable. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for your 2005 morning wake-up call, I'm hoping that everybody going to get some money and hoping everybody going to get up off the gluteus maximum and get a job for 2005. I say, well! Whoa now, whoa now, whoa now. <laughs> 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 is the female caller still on the line? 
Yes, I am. I ask again, when you were actively out in the social world, what clubs did you go to? Oh, I'm not going to tell you what clubs I went to. What's, What's the big <laughs> deal at this point? <laughs> because somebody might know me. <laughs> <sighs> wow. It's not like I'm going there anymore. So that's the point. Why don't you just tell us where you went? No. Like you're the only one who went to right. that club? Right. Oh, I know her. Yeah. She's a bohemian. Oh, oh, I know she's not a familiar. What a loser. Yeah. Whatever. Why do you got to be such a weirdo? Just say what clubs you went to. No, I went to... What's wrong with you? You know. What is wrong with you? Seriously, what is wrong with you? You got <laughs> mental problems? No. Then why won't you say what clubs you went to? How how stupid why is does that? It matter? Because I was just mildly interested. It doesn't really matter. I just frequent um, Tiki Bob. Uh huh. Little and, slut. Um, <laughs> you know her, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Tiki Bob's and what? And what else? We would just go to Tiki Bob's. Tiki Bob's was your spot. Hammy, have you ever been? Hammy, have you ever been to Tiki Bob's? Well, see, man, I, I can think maybe about two years ago I was on the other side of uh, Tiki Bob's, and that's when I got into that dispute to the fight. Well, this woman wants us to believe that she's been around the areas that you've hung out at. She was looking for the right guy to to spend a life with, and she never identified you as that guy. Can you believe that for a suspended second ham sandwich, man? See, man, that is unbelievable. Tell this woman how unbelievable it is, please. Miss, miss, miss Lady, that is unbelievable. Not only is it unbelievable, she like on a date like today, I turned 30 years old. And it don't matter if the young lady is 18, 35 to 40 to 45, she will notice me off top. She got to. Do you realize your mistakes now, caller? Do you realize you should have identified the ham sandwich man as a single available guy that you could be, as we speak right now, sharing a life with, but you blew it? I realize that now. All right. Well, tell ham and sandwich man you apologize for not being able to identify how much of a catch he was back when you and him probably crossed paths in the nightlife of Seattle. I am so sorry I missed that opportunity. And because of... I don't know how how can you miss a, a fully a fully dressed sandwich anyway though. <laughs> and because she feels so poorly and bad about her mistakes as it pertains to you, Hammy, she wants to meet you later for uh, no strings attached sex. Oh no no no. Well, it'd be a good way. It'd be a doubly good reason for you to do it, not just because you owe it to the ham sandwich man in an effort to apologize to him, but also because your husband doesn't love you and you want to get even with him. No, that's not fair to him, though. But he doesn't what's love it? you. So what kind of fairness <laughs> do you owe him? Well. What kind of fairness what do you? you <laughs> what kind of fairness do you owe him when he doesn't love you? At least to be an honest person. Why? Why do you have to be an honest to a man who doesn't even love you? Women should be honest to men that love them. He'll love me eventually. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Who's he loving right now? Is the question. Yeah, I I don't know about that. 2004 is out the door, and 2005 is a doggy doggy season. There you go. Mm. Alrighty. <laughs> you have no response to that? No. <laughs> you don't want to meet him for sex? No. <laughs> Are you sure you're not going to regret it after you hang up? I am very sure I will not regret it. All right, tell him that you never... If you're not going to have sex with him today, he never wants to have sex with you in his life or your life. So tell him right now that you're willing to sign the waiver to no sex between you two for as long as you both shall live. I will sign the waiver to have no sex. Hammy, is she making a huge mistake? Well, Miss Lady, I said it once, oh and I'm going to say it again. If I don't get you here on earth, you're going to catch me in heaven, and I'm going to show you what I was working with. Wow, in heaven. Mm-hmm. And it's going to turn into an immediate hell for you at that moment. <laughs> a hell storm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Lady. Goodbye. Happy birthday, Hammy. Oh. She throw, yeah, she throws yeah. him a token happy birthday. Yeah, yeah. You know what? He doesn't need that from this wench. <laughs> You're not going to give him any ass. He doesn't need your little token happy birthday. But from all of us, Hammy, happy birthday. Right on, right on. Happy yes. birthday. Woo! How are you going to... And, gonna, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to let up there and uh, put on my birthday shoes and my birthday jeans and uh, 
I'm going to step out. See, I, I just woke up this morning. I, I, I really didn't say what I had needed to say. I kind of messed it all up. But that was straight, though. You know what I'm saying? But yes. like 50 Cent say. I know from straight. I, I will party like it's my birthday. Okay. Now, what are you planning to do with your day? And how could listeners out there who want to be a part of the Ham Sandwich birthday participate in your very special 30th birthday? Well, okay. hey, <laughs> hey, well, I, I can't say Capricorns. In, one thing about Capricorns, see, man, yes. the capital to the corns in the year off. So 2004, one more again, it's out of there. Now we start the year off. So therefore, I'm going to start the year off somewhere, some little nice dance floor. If it's too small, I'm going to make that dance floor big somewhere. So you're going so, out to the club tonight? Somewhere. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Some, somewhere. And all they have to do, they'll know when they see you because you'll have your birthday shoes and your birthday uh, slacks on. Oh, oh, Just don't wear your birthday make, suit. You're trying, to, you're trying to make me go in there with some slacks. I might have on a pair of pants or shit. All right, fine. I thought maybe it was a special occasion. You throw on the birthday slacks. I have mine on right now. <laughs> we have our birthday slacks on for you, Hammy. Hey, a pair of slacks is fatal. If a woman see me in a pair of slacks, uh, team man, it's it's a, it's a for sure a big a big fish pie. But you don't want to tell anyone specifically where you're going tonight, so they can have a little thirtieth birthday fun with the ham sandwich man. Uh, at, at this time, I don't even know where to go right now. You know what I'm saying? Well, you just want to pick a spot on the fly or no? Uh, on the flyer? On the flyer? <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind. Yeah. Have a yeah, good I, 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 I like to pick a spot on the fly. You know what I'm saying? Where it got VIP at tonight. I'm trying to be there. Well, I'm on uh, on uh, labor alert, so <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get there. I, I look outside in the window right now. Yes. And, uh... It's, it's pretty cloudy. I don't see no snow. I heard oh, cloudy. Snow. Cloudy, uh, that that means uh, Phoenix Underground track. Oh, yeah. gotcha. It, yeah, right. pe people must be asleep right now, but uh, I'm up. I got on a pair of pants, and I ain't got no shirt on, but I might have to look into them slacks today because uh, that's going to sound like a bad doing. idea. Don't okay, the well, there you go. I'm glad I could have had that effect on your birthday. Hammy, have a great 30th birthday. Right on. There he is, ladies hey. and gentlemen. Live and in your face on his 30th birthday, the ham sandwich man, Terry, yeah. is 30 as of this moment. Do you believe it, Terry? Wow, Karen? that's crazy. How many years ago did we meet this man? Five, six years ago? Something he was like a that. mere 24, 25. Mm -hmm. He's growing up right before our very eyes. Mm -hmm. Our little baby's all grown up. <laughs> wow. mm -hmm. He's T. He's man. He's the T man. On Seattle's number one hit music station, Cube 93. It's a damn Lloyd Banks, Terry. Play a lot of him with tits and tots. <laughs> oh, yeah. Women's go crazy for Lloyd Banks, baby. Oh, yeah, and the tots, boy. Mm, those tots. <laughs> Hands in the air, waving like they just don't care. Well, they care, Terry. <laughs> Need to be changed. <laughs> damn Lloyd Banks, baby. Mm-hmm. Go to the phones and see who needs what. You're on the air. Hello. Hey, man. Yes. Hey, I got a problem with your uh, tits and tots. Oh, jeez. <laughs> For someone just tuning in, I, I, don't, I don't want to be can only a imagine what news. they're thinking, Terry. Yes, go ahead. Bear of bad wanna, news. I don't, I don't want to be a bearer of bad news on your tits and tots, but I have a feeling that if you open this place up, it's going to encourage the uh, 18 to 22 year old females to go out and get pregnant. Just it's so they not going to encourage pregnancies. What? Oh, there's a club now where we can take our, our infants. Let me get knocked up. No, it's not going to happen like that. Come on. Oh, the 21st century. That's how they do it now. I know they do it uh, in a fashion where everyone's getting knocked up before their time. But my club, don't give me so much credit. It's not going to be that big time where women are going to be, oh, i got to get pregnant quick. Come on. <laughs> Damn, Lloyd Bags, baby. <laughs> I got like a club of tits and tater tots. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's more my alley. Yeah. That well, sounds good. You can open up your own franchise. I'll open mine. Okay. <laughs> you and Napoleon Dynamite, I'm sure, will be fine together. <laughs> Give me some of your tots. You're out of the air. Hello? Do whatever we want. Gosh. Huh? How's it going to you, man? How are you, sir? All right. Whatever I feel like. Gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's that now, sir? <laughs> What's with those uh, girl Seahawks fans earlier? They weren't too big of fans, it seemed. 
What are you talking about? What are you suggesting? That no woman should be giving tickets to a Seahawk game because uh, they don't really know what's going on and they're not sports fans and they can't enjoy football, so I'm wasting free tickets on them? Is is that well, pretty much the long and short of this or what? Oh, basically, yeah. Take mm -hmm. it the games, but now that's, people need to get out there and get these tickets. So you're angry with me in some small sense or maybe large sense because I earlier in the program gave free tickets to the Seahawk playoff game to a woman. Uh, kind of, yeah. All right. She said she wasn't a fan. That kind of burned me up. Well, she said her boyfriend was a fan, and she'd like to go and spend the afternoon with him, and that's what uh, sporting events can offer, an opportunity for a, a girl to actually see her man. Uh, that's true. They should just stay home and watch it on TV. The well, it may not be on TV friend. if they don't sell 5,000 tickets by this afternoon, although the N NFL sometimes, Terry, mm -hmm. offers an extension ah. to try to sell those tickets out, and in this sense... I think it may be one of those times, but that'd be a damn shame. And the utmost of ironic situations that they could sell out every regular season game, which mm -hmm. the Seahawks did. Every game was on TV locally on uh, the home games of this regular season because right. they were all sold out. And now here we are, a playoff game, and they can't sell that one out? Boy. That is so... Does it make any sense to anyone? No. We're going to have to drive to Portland and Vancouver to see the game? <laughs> yep. Uh, that's what I'm going to have to do. Well, that's, go to Canada. that's if you don't win free tickets, sir, and I do have extra tickets to give away. Oh, man. If but I, I'd rather give them to a girl. Uh, <laughs> Who could care less about really going. Right. <laughs> I take their boyfriends. They don't know no players. Well, would you like to go to the game, sir? Oh, if I went to the game, I'd go crazy. I'd be out there with no shirt on in the freezing cold. Going nuts, though. Yes, that's what we want to project to the rest of the country, <laughs> that uh, people in Seattle are very grounded, very stable, very normal individuals. It's going to be a very cold afternoon on uh, Saturday. That may have something to do with why the game is not sold out. I'm trying to figure out a reason, but that's Terry. that's part of football, is it not? I, I mean, would think. Playing the cold. And this is the range. playoffs. Right. You're telling me all these fans that nurtured the team <laughs> into getting a home playoff game now are like, well, I got them there. I don't care less about I could care less about the game, the playoff game. Maybe because, I just want to see the regular season games. Maybe because of past history with the the team that we are going up against. They just don't want to, you know... Be there when it all right. comes crashing down. Right. Well, that's not the right attitude, is it, Terry? No, it's not. But... And as long as they play Corn Robinson, they'll be fine. <laughs> as long as Corn Robinson is in the lineup, this team could go far. So he oversleeps a meeting or two. <laughs> Big deal. All talented men are eccentric. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, sir, I think we're getting off the point. And the point <laughs> is that you would like tickets and you're going to stay in the stands naked next to some uh, innocent uh, ticket buyer that uh, has to enjoy the game with you and your naked body next to them. Is that what you're suggesting I, I do for you, sir? Yeah, hopefully next to the girls that won the other tickets. Right. Mm-hmm. Make them lose their mind. Who would you go to the game with, sir? It sounds like you have no friends. I have a couple, and they're big Seahawks fans like me. I'd have to take one of my good male friends so we could be real loud, the 12th men. You have no uh, woman in your life, sir? No, I don't. Oh, why is that the case? Why Why are you a single man? Oh, uh, well, you, you said oh, why. I don't even want him to go to the Seahawks game, so that's probably why. No, there has to be a more specific reason than that. Why are you a single man? Why don't you have anyone in your life? You're not having sex of any kind, sir? No, at this time, no. Well, you know, that's very interesting that he admitted that, Terry. Mm -hmm. You think he could have easily said, oh, no, I'm not with anyone, T-Man, but I'm having a lot of sex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get laid all the time. <laughs> but he didn't say that. No. Nope. He came right out and said, nope, not having sex. Nope, listening to T-Man show, that's way better. <laughs> oh, wow. I had a race home from work just to dial through. Okay, dude, you've been sitting out in the cold without a shirt on too long. <laughs> All right, it's frozen your brain. <laughs> but because you sound like an honest, pathetic uh, man, I'm going to give you tickets to this Saturday's game. Yay! All right. All right, dude. Now, who's the lucky guy that gets to go with you? My buddy, Miles. Miles? All right, Miles. If Miles is out there... <laughs> I'll be driving miles away right now hearing that his name has been associated with this guy. And what is your name, sir? Shane Rourke, they call me. Shane, but they call you Rourke. Yeah, I sent you some emails, too, earlier today, this morning about those. Well, I'll be sure to look for those, Shane Rourke. <laughs>
Where his lucky buddy gets to see him with his shirt off. <laughs> wow. Isn't yeah. that great that you drove home at top speed to jump on the phone lines and look what it's resulted in? You're going to Saturday's playoff game right here in the big old Northwest of Seattle. And their football team represents this area on a national level in a winner-take-all kind of fashion in this playoff tournament headed towards the Super Bowl. Hey, can I write T-Man on my chest? Please don't. <laughs> can you imagine if they just... Sir, I, I may have to take those tickets back. In between oh, no. defense, it says T-Man right, on the ha- chest. Hang on the line, sir. We'll get your information, okay? Congratulations. <laughs> can You're, can a You're a winner. You're a winner, Shane. First time ever. You're yeah. a winner, Rourke. Woo. All right, dude. Oh. There he is. <laughs> He's Shane, but... His friends call him Rourke. Boy, that, uh-huh. that works. That's normally short for Shane. Yeah. yeah. That was Mr. Rourke's real name on the Fantasy Island show. Oh, right. boy. So, real name was Mr. Shane. <laughs> I have more tickets to Okay. And one more lucky person out there is going to be the recipient. Let's see if it's a man or a woman. You're on the air. D-Man. Yes. I would love to go to that game. Are you prepared to possibly have to sit next to Shane? Well, I'm prepared. I'll be out there at 9 in the morning tailgating. Oh, my gosh. I think tailgating's illegal in this state, is it not? Uh, I believe it actually is illegal. But you laugh at the law, <laughs> don't you, sir? Uh-huh. But it is tolerated. It's mm-hmm. tolerated. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Kind of like rape, right, sir? <laughs> exactly. What? Well, who knows where, what this man's line of thinking is, Terry? Who says tailgating is tolerated? You're not going to get a ticket? You're not going to get cited for tailgating? Um, I don't think so. I, I mean, I see people do it all the time. And who would you take to the game, sir? I'll go by myself, but I'll take my girlfriend if I get two. You're going to take a woman to a football game? I will. Why? So you could sit there explaining all the intricacies of the game to her the whole way through? No, she's actually, she watches the games with me on TV and knows a little bit about football. See, there you go. Terry, I'm just saying this in a facetious fashion. I'm just uh, bringing up what the last caller presented to, no, I believe it too. Uh, <laughs> what the last caller presented to us, Terry. Uh-huh. How long have you been seeing this woman? You know, actually, we've been together for about six months, but made it official January 1st. Really? Oh, no. What do you mean you made it official? What does that mean? So it's easy for me to remember the anniversary date. What do you mean you made it official? What does what making it official mean? How are you officially... Well, we were kind of seeing each other, you know, seeing if we'd like each other. So when the everything. ball was dropping, you're like, okay, I'm going to be the boyfriend. And she's like, well, we all right, I'll be the girlfriend. Well, we already talked about it ahead of time, but everything worked out the prior six months, and so... Work, so the, the paperwork's together. done for the mail order company, really, is what he's trying to say. What? Are you engaged or what? He's dude? not engaged. He's, he's just saying just they made their girlfriend? relationship official. Yeah, I don't even know what that means. Well, I mean, we, we were kind of seeing each other, you know, seeing if we liked each other. Okay, and you need to initial there the and mess. sign there. Right. And right. Will you go with me? Mark the box, yes. <laughs> so where does she like it? Oh. Everywhere. Be more specific, please. <laughs> In the pooper. <laughs> Not that specific. You asked for specifics. <laughs> All right. So I could write in the Steiner. Is that right, sir? Oh, my God. All right, sir. Hang on. You won tickets. Because of that. Yes. <laughs> How can you deny a man who's made an official with his girlfriend who likes him to the Steiner chair? How can you deny him Seahawks playoff tickets? You can't. You can't. It's nope. funny that she likes it there. They've never been boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> see what happens when they actually become boyfriend and girlfriend. She'll put the... Uh, do not disturb sign on it now. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Boy, oh boy. Yes. See that? If that doesn't encourage you to buy tickets, I don't know what will. <laughs> right. He's man. He's the T-man. On Seattle's number one hit music station, Cube 93.